Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for August 24th, uh, 2022. The time is 6 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting here at the main meeting room um, the municipal offices of Deerfield. Um, if you go to the town of Deerfield's website near the calendar, you'll see a link to this meeting. Um, the agenda is also there for a link on that agenda. You will see a link for this Zoom meeting if you wanna participate by Zoom. If you'd like to do it by telephone, there's a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. One five eight zero, and should you need the passcode, it's five seven zero zero one two. People who are on land loan landlines um, or just on Zoom, just mute yourselves unless you're speaking. Um, for landlines, it's star six uh, to mute and unmute. All attendees should wait uh, to uh, for others to finish speaking before you're uh, speaking, and then just state your name and who you are, where you're from. So, call the meeting to order. We have. Um, First uh, item is public comment. Um, so if there's any, anybody in the public would like to make any comments on the agendas that are, we have for tonight. Jen, do you have anybody online? No, like to nobody make online. All right, sounds good. Okay, good. Um, so before we get into other, um, other uh, let's see, appearances, we, we do have a vote. Um, Carlene is here. So we're gonna take a vote on, um, something we have to do for our, um, we sold the property at the pickle factory to new pro LLC. So um, that's exciting to have a, a new business come to town and uh, it's going to be quite an investment of jobs and infrastructure to the town. So um, this is um, just a, a kind of certification of our acceptance of the uh, incentive finance um, agreement, which is called a tax incentive finance agreement or a TIF where we, you know, towns typically adjust um, amount of taxes taking into foster businesses coming to town and investing maybe 18 million bucks in the place. So, um, so I'll just read this if that's okay. And then, yep. um, so at a meeting held on August 24th, 2022, the select board voted to endorse the terms of the tax incentive financing agreement between the town of Deerfield and new pro LLC and to submit an article for town meeting approval on the upcoming special town meeting scheduled for October 24th, 2022. So I'd make that motion and- I will second that, Carolyn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Thank you. And we've been witnessed by Carlene. So thank you so much. I'll sign this. And then your signature by you. Thank you, Carlene. Make it happen. Yes, appreciate the help. So um, we have appearances at 6.15, but it's not a hearing, so we can move it up unless we want to take care of any other business first. I think we could just roll right in, right? Mark's yeah. here, right? It's for 6.15, but that's general. Yeah, general. People could, I mean, we never know it may be a longer discussion. It's, so. <laughs> it's true. You never know. So, uh, so welcome. Uh, we have a discussion of uh, quiet zones along the rail line, and um, Mark Russo is here, and you want to come up and state your name and yeah, have a seat at the mic. Uh, yeah, sure. Right there they at the mic is yeah. would be great. Speak into the yeah. mic. So anybody on the for sure. Excuse me. You, you, um, you get closer to the mic. 
Yeah, there you go. Pull it right to you. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I don't think that mic's working. Oh, no. John, can you check that? Just see if one of those others works. Yeah, it's dead. There we go. <laughs> so, longtime resident of Deerfield. Pull it forward. Right, 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 right into it. We get complaints. Yeah, otherwise, you want me to lower it? Yeah, yeah. Sure. right into your mouth good. like you're about to like kiss it. I usually get too loud. No. Nope. Okay, good. We'll take good. it. No, so, we get complaints if, if, if people right, can't so, hear. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for having us here tonight. Um, uh, my wife Beverly's with me, and Welcome. my neighbor Carl Sabo lives right down the Welcome. street. Just got back from a business trip, I think, today, and felt the issue was important enough to be here in person. Yep. Um, I had spoken with Carolyn initially about my efforts regarding some of the horn volumes of these trains. Uh, I've we have lived on I've lived on the tracks all my life. Have managed to do okay, but with the uh, commencement of the Amtrak service, uh, the Vermonter back in 2015, which fortunately just runs in the afternoon, so you put up with it. But the Valley Flyer was a new idea that was very popular politically that went into place a couple you know, back in 2019 yep. after the tracks were improved. And the concept was good, I believe, um, but I think it, it was basically a way of trying to connect Greenfield with Point South, uh, Northampton, Springfield, and ultimately New York and Connecticut and so forth. Um, and um, so that was, that was promoted, it was, it was to be, I think they realized there'd be losses and the, the DOT was funding it for a two year study period. Mm -hmm. And I think with the pandemic hitting us, uh, they've extended that for another year or so. I, I'm not sure where that's going, but I think they were overly aggressive in scheduling this, this service. And the impact of it is that uh, it's, it's running through Deerfield, not just our neighborhood. Uh, it's running through the town of Deerfield. There's five or six crossings along the way. Uh, during the weeknights, it runs through uh, on, a, on a normal schedule. Uh, it will go from, it'll go up to Greenfield at something about 1030 approximately. Mm -hmm. It supposedly picks up somebody up there and then heads back. Another one comes by at 12.30 at night, turns around and comes back. Now, each time they come through, they're laying on the horn mm -hmm. four times. And we have two crossings within a quarter of a mile where we are. And I think you have two here within the same distance. So 10.30, 12.30, at 5 in the morning, two more come up between 5 and 6. And then one will go back. And then one finally goes back at uh, quarter of 8. Plus, you might get the odd freight train coming through on the improved tracks during the night. So as you can see, it can be a real issue for uh, the people in the neighborhoods, um, like the whole town. We have a lot of senior citizens. We have some that are very elderly. We have a newborn baby right in the neighborhood. There are professionals. There are young kids. And frankly, I was somewhat surprised when I spoke to Carolyn that you folks hadn't heard a lot of complaints from the residents of Deerfield about this. And I can only assume that people just assume that that was the status quo and there was nothing that could be done and you put up with it. But if they're hitting the horns as hard in the, in the center of South Deerfield as they're hitting it up our way, they are. It, it's a real nuisance, yep. uh, especially in the summer if you need to have your windows open a little and so forth. So, um, and then, so anyway, um, my uh, Carl's wife, Jane Howard, uh, saw that I was going to be on the docket today with, uh, with this topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she gave me a call. And so I think she and others probably are trying to figure out how can, how can we deal with this issue uh, and, and, and make some progress. Um, she's done a lot of research on the quiet zone concept. And... Um, I want to present, again, we're not necessarily coming at this from exactly the same angle, but I think 
we all agree that if it's financially feasible, it would be a great thing for the whole town to have a no horn zone mm -hmm. through the town. And you know, Jane feels based on her research that the crossings we have with the gates, the closing gates and the bells and whistles, um, that that should get us uh, go quite along the, the way to perhaps getting approved for a quiet zone designation. The town has to deal with the state, I think, and with the uh, probably the FRA ultimately to get this done. Uh, I've contacted uh, the DOT. I've contacted a lot of people with mixed results, but right. Um, and if I've heard from the FRA and from the DOT that they'd be pleased to work with the town to uh, to study the feasibility of you know of uh, putting this into effect for the town of Deerfield. So I don't, I, I certainly think we should be looking into it uh, in, in earnest because we, and Jane really, um, and I'm gonna give hand out a, a, a memo that she wrote from her okay. perspective, but, but we both you know, are honing in on the, the health impact of this stuff on people. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the quality of life and, and yeah. so forth. and. Uh, Apparently, it's not just me saying this. There are doc. It's documented that well, sleep deprivation for sure. is very bad for health. Yep. If you got high blood pressure, <laughs> you know I, that's that's one thing as, as well that a uh, good night's sleep uh, can help with. Yeah. So, um, and oh, so so basically, and I I sent you a, a bunch of material. Yep. I don't know if you've had a chance to yes. wade yep. through it all, yep. but uh, not everything, but I did yeah. go through quite a bit of it. And I, you know, I know Casey had reached out to um, Linda Dunlevy, who's resident in town now, but works oh, okay. as our executive, executive director at FERCOG. And she, I think you had reached out to her at some point, gathering information as you were reaching out and well, she kind of we tried to do a little research on wh what it means and what we would need to well, do. And um, so there is a path to kind of look at this and figure out how sure, do we, sure. how do we do it? There are quite a bit of obstacles because generally, I mean, they're there obviously because they don't want to catch a car on the track or something like that and, and, and have this issue. So I think some of the issues is um, having the railroads in, uh, indemnified so that there aren't liable for any crashes if we don't have the horns and then there were ways to do kind of sight horns um mm -hmm. you know horns at the crossings that were more directed and not just kind of traveling through the whole valley but just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right at the right at the at the place where you're sitting in a car and um so it, and then there were other uh things if you could not if it was all quiet zones you needed to have some sort of guardrails so that cars couldn't zip around the gate somehow and so there was some infrastructure that would have to go in and i know it. that's i think the the federal regulations kind of really get in the way of a, a mm. logical solution to some sure. of this stuff because uh, as usual i mean yeah. for for you know i think we're trying to reduce um carbon emissions so this is a great idea but the impact on health of all these trains running up and down sure. the valley all no night question. long. Yep. And frankly, the economics of it, I, and it's hard to get statistics at how many people are getting on and off in Greenfield. Yep. But I cannot, until proven otherwise, I cannot believe that it's financially feasible to be running that have, from Northampton to Greenfield. Maybe Northampton South. I heard that they had yeah. met their just recently had met their quota or whatever number they were shooting. What yeah. what that number is and is it beneficial long term? I don't right. know, but I, do, I I did hear that they kind of met that. But I think they extended that as well, where they right. they've got to keep. I, I still keep don't listening. think that it is um, completely accurate because of the pandemic. So. Right. And I, the other I don't know the other thing is that the advice. the incremental cost from going to Northampton to Greenfield. Um, you know I before the pandemic used a train to go to New York City. And I was actually happy when they increased the number of trains because before you couldn't go to New York City and come back in the same day. Right. So there are kinks to work out, but I do think the economics, as more people say, hey, I can sit on my train and use my computer and um, do my work. And when I get to Matt, you know, when I get to Springfield or wherever you're going, Hartford, right. um, you get out and you, you take a cab to where you're going. Um, this is a reconnection. It's not a connection. So this used to be normal. 
Um, my wife used to take the train into Manhattan all the time when she was a child. We had, we had a train station right yeah, down the exactly. street. And we so, had tracks going both ways. But, but the sound question, that's mm-hmm. something that we definitely yeah. could work on. And, yeah. And, yeah. and I think um, Casey and, and I think um, Trevor was going to mention this, that there are some things that would require the town to spend several million dollars. Um, and so we have to find a solution that costs Deerfield nothing because we don't have several million dollars, but solves the problem. And um, hopefully we, we can. Yeah, it's worth but what, what's at. the process, Trevor, as far as uh, I believe uh, just reading from this, and you may have a little bit more knowledge from me, but talking yeah, with Linda, there were, we, we had to. Um, we had to send a letter requesting that they do this. Now, I had talked to Linda and she yeah. I think we can get some help writing that letter. Yeah. Um, but asking them to yeah, create we, quiet zones. We can't determine when they're going to do it. That's really up to DOT and the railroad. Right. Because they still have control over those. Plans. They can. We can yeah. at least voice that we're interested in the quiet zone, that. and that we would love to work with them and it, find it, a way to make that happen. Coming in tonight is the first step because yeah. hearing you from know, the public, just talking well, to me and making phone calls, that's not going to go anywhere. No, no, I realize that. You know, I hadn't had any luck either. So, <laughs> but having us officially. As uh, being on the agenda, having us officially mm-hmm. write a letter mm-hmm. can start the process. Yeah. And I, you know, there is money involved, so I'm not sure what we can yeah. end up with. But I had asked you about start. CPA or or Chapter 90, I guess mm-hmm. it is, uh, those type of funds. But in in the, uh, the this uh, Ms. Schlesinger from the DOT sent me a letter. I'm not sure how much of the follow-up that they did, but they said it it could be expensive for the town, but not always is. So I mm-hmm. think the key thing is to get get an answer, get the get process start. going. Yeah, what's right. involved what's with, with doing this now? Mm-hmm. Jane, uh, and this is a very well written memo that she's put oh, together. She was requesting um, a quiet zone from North Hillside Road through Keats Cross Road. It goes up to Wilburn Hill. That would cover our area of particular interest. Mm-hmm. I would think if you were serious about it, you might want to include this town. Yeah, town I think the residents well. downtown kind but of get into it. Before I too, forget, but... let me just give you yeah. all a copy of her. Is it something I can make copies of for all of us? I, I have uh, I have a copy. Carl, okay. do you have a copy? You can get one. Certainly. Let me, okay. I can run off some Here's copies here. Five, oh, okay. Oh, oh great. Good. I didn't know. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And I sympathize with you because my home is on Greenfield Road and the New York train and all the freight trains run directly by oh, my, right. behind my house, probably about 200 yards from my house. Oh, yeah. And we're, we're at the after Lamore Lumber, so the horns are starting sort of right yeah. around where I live. Oh, sorry. So, oh, yeah. Okay, there's three of them. Yeah, yeah well, we're, we're yeah. Sitting on it. yeah. No, I understand right. that it's yeah. a difference between, you know, 150 or 200 yards, or maybe it's less than that. I yards, maybe it's feet. So you're not too far from Keats Road. Is that, uh, that be your no, I'm I, crossing. I'm um, right at the bottom of the long hill off Greenfield Road. You, I, you may not know what that is, okay. but uh, that's what people tell me it's called. It's right below Kip Camosa's house, the former house. Oh, but you're what, up, right you're, in your front yard, pretty yeah. much. Oh, if you're on, if you're, you're on Steve Mill, and, and me. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you can hear them pretty good. Yeah, I hear them, and, and fortunately, um, I managed to sleep through it. <laughs> but, you know, I think, <laughs> but I think not the, everyone's that fortunate. The way they were selling this, needing four trains throughout the night, was well, somebody can get in, get on the train in Greenfield at five forty-five a.m., go to New York City spend the day and come back at 12 30 at night and tim you would fit mm-hmm. into that category right how many people are doing that though that's what i want to know because yeah. I, I, most people would go to new york and probably stay a couple of days and come back on the sure. vermont or still because sure. right? you're going to be 10 hours traveling under that scenario yeah. so you can't do if it's business yes you could go to a business meeting but i, t- I just don't see the demographic to support the the need for maybe from Northampton, fine, but from Greenfield to go down and back. But that's not our. That's not our issue, here. right? But, we can do. But we can definitely get the data but if for we sure. Get them to to Thank evaluate you. the economics of how it's working now, and even if they during the pandemic they cut back on the trains, and and that was a positive step in the right direction. You didn't have the one at twelve thirty; you only had one at five to six in the morning. 
one at 1030. And at least you get a, an opportunity for a few hours of uninterrupted sleep. So. so if I'm hearing you correctly, you were really only concerned about the noise. I mean, the economics of the trains doesn't impact your life, but the noise no, does. No, but it the bothers noise. me as a, of a, as a citizen. Well, I, I understand. Think, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Everybody I mean, we, has, you know, the things idea. they don't want to pay we're for. Not, nobody's yeah. against public transportation. And mm -hmm. right. I wish it could be like, you know, we were watching a, a cooking show in Norway and the, the electric train oh, comes up the to the village and just toots, you know, just so quiet and you hardly even know it's there. Mm -hmm. But we got these regulations that you've got to have 110 decibels yeah. four times to go through a crossing that has flashing lights and bells and whistles. Right. It's counter counterproductive. Yep. Yeah. Um, it is interesting. Um, I, Atlas Farm had a, an, a field dinner this year. Yeah. And this year you had to cross the tracks to go out to the site because in previous years you were coming from River Road, but this year we were coming from the Atlas parking area. And we happened to be leaving just as a train was going through, but I pulled over the thing and I looked and I said, I saw this yellow train engine and I said, Ooh. oh, okay, that's, that's, I didn't realize it was really moving fast. And there was somebody immediately behind me so she came up and it was a lot closer. She got across. And yeah, then, but it's, but there was no no horns blasting there and there was no separation because so it's, that was just a it's farm, a cross. farm, farm crossing. Yeah, yeah nice. so that's um, where you can have a it would be good to have all crossings yeah. covered with some sort of barrier. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. And and the, the noise reduced drastically. But we're pretty hardened. I mean, we if you got some of those polite engineers, we can sleep through it. But some of these guys, I mean, they literally lay on the horn from the whole Carl's way house through. to ours. So it, it varies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ben, were you going to say something? No. I don't remember talking. Yeah. I just realized that. Look at your statistics. There have never been one fatality in Carl's 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 Carl's
Thank you so. very much. Bye, Mark. Thank, thank, thank you for coming. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you, you for coming. Did, did Carl, did you? Oh, yeah, please. Course, please come on up, state your name, have, a, have some words. <laughs> now, my name is Carl Sabo. I live at 21 Greeno Crossing Road in, in Deerfield. Um, I just wanted to emphasize what Mark has said about the, um, the, uh, the health aspects of this train going by. We live about um, 100 yards from the tracks. And um, we have a private driveway that goes over the, over the railroad tracks. Uh, there are lights, um, but um, you know it is. Um, uh, if you if you live close to the tracks, it's highly intrusive. Um, it's life altering. Um, lack of sleep, anxiety, um, constantly worried about the trains. Discussions all the time about the noise. Um, you know, discussions of moving, getting out of there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we would really appreciate any kind of help that we could get trying to, you know, create a quiet zone of some sort, um, if not all of Deerfield, you know, this residential section that we, that we were talking about between uh, Hillside and uh, Keats Road. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's basically it. And was there a survey uh, discussion? I didn't hear anything about um, uh, doing a survey with residents. Would that be a necessary or helpful? Uh, uh, it may be part of that process for sure. If you know, if we're going to do something like that, I would imagine we would have to do a survey to all the residents. Could we be see. proactive? In, I was going to suggest that proactive would be a good thing because even if you don't need it, it would certainly um, highlight to the town how important the issue is. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if that's something that uh, someone could take on. Well, it would be consolidated and made a little bit smaller, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll work on that. And should we submit it to somebody here before we actually go out and collect signatures on, on this issue? If, yeah, I mean, it's, anything that helps. Yeah. It, it, what public. it does is it just documents it so that, you know, it helps our process. Okay. But, yeah, and, uh, you know, if you want to do that, that, I think that's a good idea to start it um, so that you have some documentation when we, if we get a response and, and start the process. But mm -hmm. hopefully it won't be such a big deal. I'm sure they'll come out and do site visits and see what kind of crossings, you know, the caliber of the crossings, you know, what's there, what's not there, um, the kind of traffic that happens and doesn't happen. So, um, I don't, we don't really know what they're going to say, but it would be compelling to have a petition and people mm -hmm. signing it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. The other question that I had was uh, the involvement of um, state representatives or others that may be influential in the process. Um, it's good to have a local buy-in. However, uh, we do have state reps and congressmen. I don't know sure. how far, you know, you want to, how much of a deep dive you want to, we could do this, but uh, contacting state reps, would that be something that the town would do or would, would we we're, as individuals Well, Mark has talked to them and I've talked to them. Um, I, what, what you want to do to make that effective is you need to, we need to start the process. We need to find out what we want to pursue and what we can't, can't pursue or can pursue. And then, then you ask them for support. When Specific they actually action. Have an action to do, right? Mm -hmm. okay. if, if, if you can't, put together, I mean, just to ask them to support, it doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have them um, follow something through to like the DOT or like the feds or whatever, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it depends. And it depends on what the process is. Is it, the, this is a railroad. So it's mostly gonna be the federal. Um, it's federal. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's one of the frustrations of this. You know, the railroad doesn't even respond when they have spills and, you know, they, they're hard to work with, let's mm -hmm. just say that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and because they're, I mean, even during COVID, they, you know, wouldn't cooperate with us. Yeah. So I, I would say, you know, the best thing to do is we'll start the process. We'll find out what we have to do to, to make it move. And then who we're, 
who we're supposed to be dealing with yeah. and what we have to do. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that we, uh, most of us appreciate the, the positive financial benefits of, uh, of an active railroad. The freight trains are definitely increasing, um, but it is the noise. And, yeah. uh, you know, the more the train, I mean, I know that Mark gets affected by the rumbling because he's so close. However, it is the horn. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, my house shakes when, the, when there's a particularly heavy freight train. You know, my, yeah. my screen our, our, computer monitor vibrates. And our foundation yeah. is, is cracked. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's causing physical damage, but that's a different issue. Mm -hmm. exactly. we, yep. we discount that. Mm -hmm. yep. So what would someone propose, like, why don't be at the federal level, like 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. or something like that? We don't know what the options are. We don't know are. any of it, yeah. yeah. We're looking at all that. Yeah, I would say quiet zone. Hope the best quiet zone would be 24 hours a day <laughs> yeah. is that you don't blow the horn right. or you have some mitigation that allows you not to blow the horn, right. but you get federal approval and buy-in. Um, yeah, there's a whole there's a That's whole what you would like, yes. There's a lot of there's 24 a hours a day. Yeah, that's the ideal, but you know, whatever we can get, I'll just... There's a process to follow. We just yeah. have to yep. go and There are that. a number of quiet zones, I guess, on the yep. eastern part of the state, but right. there are none on the western part of the and state. And I think a lot of it has to do with the sensors that are on the tracks. The tracks don't have the specific speed sensors so that if somebody, if an engineer isn't paying attention or whatever, the, the train positive controls, they kind of control, but the, it's a very expensive thing to put on the track. So you're kind of waiting. Well, I guess... The track has to have that before you can have a quiet zone was one of the things that we were told so so there's expense involved for the railroads oh, to, major. to implement yeah. a, uh, a quiet zone correct yep mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if it's if it's been funded out you know out east because of the number of people living there and using it and that kind of thing they feel like it's worth it but out here whether the, they can swing it or not that's the that's the key but we'll find all that out you know look at the right. process and see what it is and See Thank what the roadblocks are. Report back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank Thanks you. for coming tonight. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mark. Uh, actually, the uh, DOT did send out somebody, uh, a private contractor uh, with decibel uh, measuring equipment, and they put one on my deck and some of the other uh, crossings in town. It wasn't a representative sample, though. They, they were there for one day, and I tried to get the guy to come back and do it for, you know, to get a, a decent sampling of data, of like two or three or four, yeah. four days. They just uh, did it on one day, and I never heard back what the when, results were. When was that? Um, probably a year ago. A couple years ago or a yeah, year ago? So okay. if, if they do come out, if you can try to talk Ask them for into large, getting longer. a larger sample, I think that would Okay, be it's helpful to know. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you all. Thanks for coming in. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, so we'll wait for Jane Amin. Jane Amin to come yes. in about 45 minutes. Um, the select board announcements. Anything you want to hit on? We have the, you want to talk about the vaccine clinic? Oh, oh, anything oh, else yeah, uh, oh, yes. I can, I was going to wait for the board of health, but um, Friday, uh, the 26th, we have extended hours from 2 to 7 p.m. for our COVID clinic. You can come and get um, your um, booster or for shots, we'll, whatever, come. Yes. And that's at Deerfield Elementary School? Yep. Yes, at the Deerfield Elementary School. And um, we hope people will take advantage of it. I need to. Yep. Great time for uh, getting back to school and being prepared. I know that the, the new vaccine is coming out for the bivariant, uh, bivalent um, COVID vaccine uh, later in a, hopefully in the coming uh, weeks or so, but uh, this is always good to, you know, get prepared and you're still going to have a good uh, immunity for some time, just like with the new variant out there um, vaccine. So the more the merrier. Right. Yeah, we're hoping to keep the schools yep. open and safe. So yep. more people that are vaccinated, the better um, opportunity to, to stay operating through the school year. So yeah. we just encourage everyone to please come. Right. We'll Anything um, sure. Um, I just wanted to let um, the community and the library uh, folks know that today I spent an hour or so um, sending individual emails to all of the representatives and state senators of the communities that are 
I'm looking to get new new influx of money from ARPA Great. Uh, for the supplemental. Um, so just saying that, you know, Deerfield Select Board had written a letter and we were encur encouraging you to support this effort. And uh, um, so it was, it was, it was Thank good. you for doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a lot of work. No, I, I mean, uh, changing the names. I, I yeah. wrote one letter and I just changed the names and the addresses, but uh, yeah, yeah you good. know. It no. still takes a lot of time. It does. It does. It's I don't a, have it's one of those mail marriage, mail chimp things. So <laughs> I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure I said, you know, rep Dom, please, you know, you yep. know and uh, so each one. Anyway, that was Good. my day. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for following up on that. I There was a lot of excitement through the state. So I, I hope we have hopes of mm -hmm. making this successful. So we'll see. And it was nice to, it was encouraging to see the Tilton Library um, notification that went out um, mentioned our efforts to get additional money from the state. So Great. it was good to see that there was a, you know, team effort here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, for sure. Um, we had a, a good meeting the other night on the um, emergency management um, director yeah. and chief uh, came in and brought, brought the uh, other fire chiefs in and uh, South County EMS in and, and uh, Kevin here. And we kind of talked about different schools. things we're working yeah. on schools and, I was looking at the next thing. I was watching the um, kind of YouTubes on, you know, been a very quiet hurricane season, but the end of the month, beginning of September, there's a few waves coming. So maybe steering up the East Coast, but something to keep an eye on for that emergency well, management it, stuff. I, so. I, I felt really, it, it was important. It was frustrating over the summer to have all these meetings and have no real plan for the school year to, for COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was really being a little depressed, <laughs> but then I thought, well, you know, we're just going to have to we're doing work, it. we're work on it, We will. Um, but we need to get back. It's a triple dip La Nina year again, third La Nina year, which is very rare, hasn't happened for many, many, many decades. And um, so we'll probably have some ice storms and stuff like that and not a lot of snow. So it makes sense to get all our contact information up and get everybody connected and yep. to practice some more stuff that we haven't been doing for the last two years because we've been so overwhelmed consumed. with COVID. Yeah, um, completely So it consumed. just, it felt really, really good to move forward and to be organized again about that. And I, good. I just want to thank Trevor and Tim and for really everybody is pulling together. Routine. And that's, Routine. yeah. Yep. And that's really wonderful because it, you know, we're, tr we're trying to keep, get Tim up and running, but it's also just, it's so great for us to be working with everybody and see face to face and um, just know that we can, we can work together no matter what happens here in town. Good. Um, so I just want to say thanks. Welcome. Thank you for your work. Um, let's see. I haven't, uh, let's see, Monday, uh, last night had a meeting at uh, FERCOG. I've been on the, um, committee to look at FERCOG's reorganization and how they, what their structure is going forward with the retirements that are coming and um, really just, they've had a lot of after action after COVID and just other kind of assessments of FERCOG and how it, how it, what it does and how it's structured. And um, it's the time to kind of shake things up and reimagine it and figure out, are we in the right spot or, and how does it relate to the towns? What, what services it can, how does it benefit Deerfield and how can it benefit Deerfield better and other towns as well? There's a lot of people on that committee. So um, it's a big lift, but it's, it's, I felt it was important to be there to do that. I chair the council this year. And um, so that's been exciting and, figuring out what, what's going on and how, how we can better, how the FERCOG can better serve the towns and how we can work together. Cause you know, it's all about regionalization working together. So. Well, I think, you know, like I said, Trevor, it's, it's vaccine management. Mm -hmm. it's, that has to happen somehow. Yep. Yep. For sure. You can't have, you know, half the, half the communities not included. Yep. That's a huge, that was a huge topic. So yes. that's definitely getting looked at and addressed for sure. And where, where different preparedness sits in the organization and what the jobs are and that kind of thing. So it's good stuff. Um, let's see. Um, do board of health agent, do you want to hit on anything? Oh, sure. I uh, just want to mention that um, 
Our uh, actually PCR uh, testing has gone up uh, quite a bit just recently in the uh, since actually over the week. Um, did two out of fives um, and we did a perk the other day. Um, doing the NATO grant meetings as well, talking about um, you know updating the um, standard operating procedures when it comes to uh, certain kind of responses, especially when it comes to workforce resiliency of. Uh, you know, natural disasters, as we mm -hmm. just mentioned uh, a little bit, uh, and just making sure that, you know, the town has a game plan going forward, just updating that. So working with the other departments as well, and just saying, hey, you know, how's it going? Uh, and, and, you know, brainstorming different ideas of, of what we should be incorporating into that new um, draft document. And, and hopefully we can, um, you know, at a later time uh, this year, we can come to, you know, some sort of discussion and uh, and talking about a preparedness uh, measure as well, including COVID and any various other potential pandemics that might be emerging uh, in the near future. So, thank you. Um, I think we should mention that how wonderful a job Cindy Majewski is doing. Our new thank nurse. you, thank you. I she's um, been fantastic. She's seeing so many people and. She's updating our homebound list. I think we have about 32, yeah. which is makes me feel very more comfortable because mm -hmm. um, you know I had whittled down to six, and I just knew that was not accurate. So um, she's I, done a terrific job. Yeah, she's really putting in a lot of time to organize um, our most vulnerable population, identify them again, mm -hmm. and um, so if we have a train derailment or ice storm or you know hurricane you know, whatever what they need if it, we know who, who we have to look out for and I, so i feel so much more relieved and i i just you know she's doing a lot of um advice on wound care and after being released from the hospital and some med mix-ups and stuff mm -hmm. and i you know that's exactly what i had envisioned is just more time with people because it's harder for people to get to the primary care now yep. it's harder for people to see specialists and there is no one advocating for anybody anymore hardly unless you have a family member that right. is on top of stuff mm -hmm. and so i i feel that we have cindy is available to people and is clearly clearly yep, by the amount of people that we're she's seeing yeah. um and you know we're, yeah. we're having a huge impact yeah. so she's uh you know just wonderful community outreach just went to the informational crafts um fair mm -hmm. um cruise night there cruise, cruise night, night great. at yeah. the um jennifer uh Remillard's, um event uh so she was there giving out little goodie bags and just meeting people and um a lot of uh of of just um community members coming in and really um taking part of her services um we just started up with the sharps um, collection. So, you know, disposable sharps, and then you get a new container. We just started that um, about a week and a half ago or so. So um, we've been uh, collecting quite a bit. Um, we're, we're, we're almost there where we can almost send it back to series cycle because we're just, um, you know, there's such a big uh, need for it in the community. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, you know, Deerfield's providing that. Cindy's has been great. Um, working with Jennifer Remlard and, and other seniors and just really, you know, just providing, you know, uh, point of, you know, just uh, blood pressure visits and stuff like that. So any questions, she's just been terrific. Um, yeah. And her extension is 114, right? Yeah. So. Well, I think it's really important because in the beginning of COVID, we were trying, everyone was trying very hard to protect the most vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. And now it's gotten to the point, well, you're kind of on your own. And so, you know, Cindy has a supply of, you know, tests. She has, you know, PPE if people need masks for her to go and, you know, go to the most vulnerable population and say, look, you need to have this. If you're going to have people over, have the test, you know, wear your mm -hmm. masks if it's not your normal pod uh, you know your household group and so i you know i think that she's getting that message out to um our most vulnerable population and that i have to say that's a huge relief to me because i i feel like the shift is leaving people behind and vulnerable and i i just want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect them still yep 
Well, she loves her job. I spoke to her and she just really, really is enjoying this and created a really nice space to, to visit. So please, if you have the need, come and see her. Um, so uh, let's see, we have some minutes tonight. Yep. This makes me so happy. <laughs> I can't tell you, I'm just, oh, thank you very much, Alex and whoever's working and on these and Jennifer, thank you yep. so much. So um, I'll make a motion to um, approve the minutes for January 5th, 2022. Um, I will second or that. Or do you want to wait and do these or do you want to read them no, later? No, no, no. You... I, I, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's just that when they're so old, I mean, they seem like mm -hmm. they're fine. Yeah, so, I did read them. They look, I, they look I, good. I, I remember them. them. <laughs> I remember the meetings yep. in February. Um, yeah. So just make a motion for each day and I. Okay. And I'm going to abstain from all of them because I wasn't a part of this board <laughs> yep. at the time. So. Yep, that's fine. So, um, so I have a motion for January 5th. We have a second. All those in favor? Tim, you're going to abstain. Oh, oh, I'm. Okay. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Um, uh, make a motion to approve January 10th, 2022. Uh, and I will second that. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Tim abstains. January 12th, 2022. Um, I will you make, a motion. make a motion to approve. Yep. And I will second that. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Tim abstains. And then um, we have January, uh, make a motion to approve uh, the minutes of January 26, 2022. I will second that. Those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then we have uh, make a motion to approve the minutes for February 9th, 2022. And I will second that. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I think that's it right now. Make sure I didn't lose it. Yep, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> so Trevor, there's going to be um, five sets of minutes every select board meeting. Now you're just really. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go it through now. it for months. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to see that. Um, so the way that it's gonna work is you'll get them on Friday to okay. for a meeting. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So it gives you a few days to look at yeah. it. If you're unsure, you can go back and look at the YouTube channel because right. all the, the meetings are either on FCAT or sure. YouTube. That's great. Thank you. You can hear me now, right, Jen? Yep. She texted okay. me. I she couldn't to hear. Text her back okay. And find out if she could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, let's see. So next order of business is to, uh, we have a petition to um, have the Franklin County Bar Association road race again. Yes. Um, so this is for... Um, Saturday, October 1st, 2022. It's at nine o'clock and they, it will be um, from Old Deerfield Main Street down onto Mill Village Road and then back. And they expect um, that it will be completed and cleared out by, by 12 noon PM that day. And he's spoken with uh, Chief Paturik and um, I think I've spoken to everybody. Pretty and good. They, if they have questions or coordination, they will yep. do it directly with Jeremy. Perfect. Uh, and I'm uh, so I'll are you making a motion? You, go ahead. You want to make oh, a motion? I'll make the motion to support this. Okay. And I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you all very much. It's to benefit. Um, it's a fundraising arm of, of the Franklin County Bar Association right. um, community and for scholarships for seniors graduating in Franklin County. Great. Um, we have a couple of forms for the uh, uh, Sunny Days Municipal Compliance documents. We did one of these the other day, but this is, um, we have the marijuana cultivating license and the marijuana um, retailer license. This Correct. is for Sunny Days. And this just kind of states that all of their uh, paperwork is in order with the town so that we're kind of saying to the CCC that they are in compliance. And I believe- Generally the chair- uh, would signs sign. it. So, so I would make a motion to approve that um, with the uh, having the chair sign. And I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'll sign those real quick. Um, I'll just leave the date blank for you to 
You didn't fill out oh, doom and doom. Oh, you know what? I thought I filled it in, but maybe I didn't. I just wasn't sure. I think that you did on some. But... We scanned it okay. and send it to them. Um... Do you, uh, let's see, the next item is South County billing write-off request. Yes. Uh, do you, anybody want to talk about that? No. I know <clears throat> people get really worried about the write-off, but the write-off is our billing rate for the most part. There are some bills that we, that we truly can't collect, but um, we go through a collection system to make sure that we, you know, have exhausted all our options on them but truly they're not very much one of the write-offs is if you what our bill is say it's 750 dollars for an ambulance medicare pays 350 that's 400 dollars that is written off and so i just want to make a clarification right. that it, we are very lucky in south county because we have a, a lot of people that carry private insurance so when we bill out 750, we get 750 or whatever the billing is now. But the um, when you get Medicare, it's whatever the government is willing to pay. And so that is part of the write-off that we have to do regularly um, on, a, on an annual basis. It, the total is, uh, it's for 79 bills for older than six years, dating back to May 18th, uh, 2015, for a total of uh, $120,942.21. Um, so, you know, pursuant to South County EMS established write-off policy, hereby request the Town of Deerfield Select Board approve the disposition of the following as uh, confidentially identified in the separate cumulative request for disposition report from Comstar. So Comstar puts this, Comstar does all our billing for us. These are the bills that they can't collect on, even though they've been trying. Um, and again, it's like you said, it's partials of bills. Some people that just don't have insurance, however it works. But um, again, it's a long time frame, and we do this every once in a while to, um, yep. to clean the books. Yes. So, um, I make a motion to approve this write-off amount of $120,942.21. Do you have a second? I'll second it, but I would like to discuss it. Sure, please. Good discussion. Um, so, yeah, this represents roughly about $20,000 a year in, in write-offs mm -hmm. over that period of seven, almost seven years, maybe it is seven years now, a little more than seven years. Um, and uh, I'm new to the South County Emergency Medical System Service, EBU, so yep. Board of Oversight. So we had a discussion about this, the, the one, the first meeting I attended. Um, Comstar does seem to do a good job of collecting and, and handling the billing for the, for the system. Some of this also might represent, unfortunately, people who have deceased. Correct. Um, and the billing can't be collected. And so um, I would encourage, and I will encourage, um, you know, the South County um, group crew to, you know, try and improve on the collections, but, um, you know, that's something that uh, is a reality. Uh, it is an ability to pay can be uh, the difference between. Well, we, we go, we collect through Comstar, which we have a very high collection rate, as you mentioned, but we also have um, participate in their arm of their, you know, collection agency collection agency so this goes through two many, many attempts yeah, exactly. right at least two except for the medicare the difference between like medicare medicaid write-offs and right. uh, um you know what we normally charge we'd break legs but they already have yeah if they've been in the ambulance <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but that's why right. <laughs> in every group in every group there's some that are very old and then there are just some regular you know like over a year old yeah. within the year and mm -hmm. those are the ones that are the difference between what the government will pay like mass health will right. pay or whatever and, no, they do good and, and what we charge so it, we, it's a combination we are collecting good data at seams right yes. i know that that was always a thing like it was a really important get you know the name the phone number that kind of thing at the scene because after they go away it's hard to kind of track people down everything so. is recorded on the 
um, computer Good. immediately and um, as soon as we respond and it's downloaded when we go to the, you know, at the hospital. Yep. So, okay. Uh, but our collection rate is very good. We're one of the top collection rates, really. So. Yeah. No, it's a good service for sure. We just yep. always try to get the most we can because it's, ex you know, big expense to our taxpayers. However, because we are regional, it's very, very beneficial for the three towns, for sure. No doubt about yep. that. Good services. So any other discussion? No, none for me. Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all very much. So you just needed a vote. Well, there's no signature on that, right? No, okay. you just no. need a vote. All right. Um, there is, um, oh, uh, so the next item is uh, South Deerfield Common Updates. Uh, I just wanted to kind of hit on this a little bit. So as you know, I've been on the town common committee trying to get get something going on the common and the from bless you, from day one the problem has been we don't own the road it's a state road so we had that meeting with dot and they have concerns of where our crosswalks were going to be in the original plan how far they were um, the parking around them and all of that so um Berkshire Design has gone to um, meet with, um, trying to think of his name down there. Um, Tim Mayer no, or uh, uh, Mark Minahan? Bell Lang. Who? Is it Bell? No, it was one of the guy. I can't think of his name. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Met, I thought it was Bell Lang that was handling the process. Bell, yes. Bell. Sorry, Bell. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't hear you. Um, so, yeah, so he had kind of come up with his I idea of how to make it safer. And what that requires is... Um, their bus comes in kind of in front, in front of Giving Tree. So that would have a pull in area, but they would be, we would be extending out the road and um, sidewalk areas to lessen the space of how long it would take to get from the common to Grave Street sidewalk. Um, and then calming traffic down throughout Park Street so that when you come through Park Street, um, you actually have to come to a stop and then turn right. I love the design. It adds more green space to our downtown. It slows the traffic down. However, who pays for all of that? You know, we paid for, you know, um, 350,000 worth of, re you know, repairs to just the common, but we did not plan on another 500,000 of work. And I said, I love this design, DOT. When, when can you get started paying for it? You know? Yeah. Uh, so I don't really know what that, how this is going to, so there's a new plan, which I should have had prepared for you today. Um, I can get I it. Trevor, you should have. <laughs> What's that? You should have. Yes, I definitely should have. Uh, I forgot this no. was on the agenda. So I, I will get you the plan so you can see what the new plan looks like. So um, Berkshire Design has re-engineered our crosswalk. So my thought was we could do the common work in anticipation of the state doing their work or coming up with some deal or however it works. Um, but this I don't this, really want to hold up. Right. This we have there's a supplemental budget that's going to happen in October. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a supplemental budget when the formal season starts in January. So I think we need we we need to get a price on this. Yes. And, and then we need to get um, Joe and Nally on board for they putting have, it in for the supplemental budget. And they've been on board with this whole process. Know, they were here at I the know. meeting. They, they know what's right. going on. And I we can say out of hard. this meeting, we, we need right. this earmark or some, or DOT to get an earmark to do this. The, diff the difference is it's going to be the, is ARPA money is going to be the October supplemental right. budget. And it's going to be excess tax revenue for the January one. Right. And that's going to be a new administration. So it's going to be really critical that we get in there and move our requests forward. So this so, one would be under the January one. Well, I, I, think, I think we have a good chance under ARPA because, again, this is you're trying to do sociability, um, walkability down your downtowns. And, th and all your ARPA money was to revitalize the downtowns who were really highly affected from COVID. So again, I think you can make your argument we could try. for supplemental budget mm -hmm. under ARPA. 
and we just need to get a price tag on it, Trevor. I can get that. I think um, I, I think I asked roughly in an email. You asked for a rough estimate. To uh, so I can ask to, I can ask to Jeff DOT to to, um, to actually to um, Jeff from Berkshire Design. I was like, well, what is this? What do you think this will run? I think yeah. it was like five hundred thousand bucks or something. Somewhere like between that. it was yeah. somewhere between. Um, 400 and 500, depending right. on what adjustments well, let's they try come to back get, to us. Let's with. try to get a quote under 500 because do you think you know, we it's, should? It's psychological right. to say 500. Right. So do let's you, get 442 or something. Do you think it makes sense to look at moving forward with the common project before we have this laid out? Um, or I, not i just i my whole thing has been shifting of these crosswalks and i that's why i keep saying to everybody on the okay. committee i'm like until I, you have it committed I, I i think it's okay to start the bidding process mm -hmm. but i wouldn't sign the contract we can't until we have the money we've got to have an we've got to have a number so that we can have that out well in the you bid. want well, the, what state, the money's not going to come to us, Casey. It's going to come to Mass DOT. Yeah, but and you want Mass DOT to make a commitment to do this on their on their street. Yeah, but I don't think they'll even do a bid process without a more refined number. Right. No, we can get a refined number, but I'm my one my curiosity is should we do the common work, which just well, it, it is ex this new design does expand it out into that sea of asphalt areas heading towards because it, it, it needs to kind of if reach Mass DOT, there. If Mass DOT is on board, then I would say, let's, let's work together and-, and All right. And so well, I have a question about Mass DOT saying that, that um, we would have to do permitting through them, right? If part so of the permitting process was, was that they really wouldn't permit it without having these- It redesigned to their so standards. Will, my, my, this is mm -hmm. sort of a question is where are we in the- permitting process with mass dot yeah, because so we didn't the so what happened out of our meeting here jeff went down to meet with val and then through their discussion of like should we start this permitting process val said really you need to do this work along with your common crosswalks and i said well that's all well and good but where's the money that's not our street why would we be doing that work right. um so it's it, and so i don't know whether we start the process of permitting for our footprint and say we're going to set up our stuff and it may take you several years to do yours but that's a question actually that would be good to ask jeff right just as an how aside. do we do that mm -hmm. and how do we talk with dot because we're waiting for dot to come back and tell us you know what what's up with the sidewalks you know right. they were going to do some research and come back to us on a lot of stuff so it's worth kind of reaching out it's been a separate you know a month or so are you ready to come back yet? Or is it another month you need? Or what, I, I what does think it we mean? should use, I think Casey should reach out to set up another meeting because it has been time and we want to make sure we're in the supplemental budget for October. Mm -hmm. And we only have two or three more weeks to, before it's too late for that. Mm -hmm. okay. But they could do that in January as well. This is a DOT thing, right? It, it, and and right. Yes, my, me personally, I think the ARPA thing is a great thing. And if we could get it in in, in, in the October supplement, well, that, that's great. But this is just a regular maintenance thing too. Right. Right. So um, it might not be as defensible. I, I, frankly, I'd rather get 4.4 .4 million in ARPA funds for a library than, mm -hmm. than 500,000 for the sidewalk fix. And the other thing is that the CPA funds are good for three years. So you know, if we don't get to break ground this year, well, unfortunately, we won't make the oh, for the common. Yes, yeah. I agree. And that's what I was trying to kind of set up our town common committee because they're all like, let's yeah. get going. We got money. And but I'm like, well, the, you got to make sure it's laid out. And I don't want to start on something and realize, oh, we put the sidewalk and now the we can't put it is there. So working with mass COT is so slow. So if we we just we can say that we want to put it into the eighth. The, I mean, we know to January one would probably be the one, but you want to keep pushing. Tim. Oh yeah, no question. But who mm -hmm. writes the who writes this application? It's not the, the right. town can't ask for money from DOT, right. Right? right? No, but that's why you go to you keep hounding DOT. Right. Yeah, they, they don't get off the dime unless you yeah. like. And in relation to this, getting at hounding them is uh, I don't know. If, I I forwarded or BCC'd you I think on my letter to Tim Mayer saying I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned you might be looking for money to fix our sidewalks. Yes. And um, then Trevor kicked in and said, oh, yeah, we've got this other thing that he had done. So, yes, yes. Um, 
So I'm like, we could get them back to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. This, right? I think that's a great idea. And get Joe and Natalie to come along. Yes. And then maybe uh, talk to Joe and Natalie before and say, having, having action plan. Uh, what kind of action plan can we develop today so that when you go back, you're working on this for October? Right. Or you're, or for Every time to, that they, you meet with them, you're moving incrementally towards it. Yep. It's mm -hmm. just, you well, have to hound them to death. Well, I just so. wanted to bring that to you guys too Absolutely. and see yeah. what your yeah. thoughts were on it. And okay, so we'll get try to get another meeting with DOT. And I, I know it's a pain because we all have to- It is together. what it is. No, but that, that's how you make them- I just didn't want to commit to doing anything until everybody was on board oh, and knew yeah, what, yeah. what our stuff was happening. So, okay, great. Thanks for the update. Yep, sure. Um, how are you? I'm Welcome. Well. Come have a Hi, seat. Jan. You got to talk into the mic. Jan. Yep. Yep. Talk into the mic. Hopefully this will be less challenging than that conversation. <laughs> oh man. I feel like I need a match. They're all challenging. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you know, Tim, Tim is our new board member. We met, this is I, Janamy. Didn't I meet you at, uh, the, um, the energy conference was Jan there or was one I of your representatives? So. Amy. Amy was Yeah, there. that would have been Amy. Yeah. Okay. Jan, Jan is fabulous. Rock star. So She's lovely. a rock star. Yes. We're oh singing boy, her well, praises here. I hope I don't ever disappoint you. Those are the people are fabulous. So we know it's cool. not Thank your you. fault if, if you oh, do. So. That's right. Oh, man. She goes the, to the last mile and, the, and, and hounds but, everyone to death on all our bids. Yeah, well, sludge and well, all that's, the nasty stuff. That's my job. I'm just doing. I tell people I'm just doing my job. Well, that's what you nice. pay me. That's what you pay me to do. So it's nice. And I like my job, it. so it's even better. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're here to talk about I, mattresses. I am. Um, so the the background on this is that the uh, the mass do uh, mass D, so you got me saying DOT now. Yeah. Uh, Mass DEP um, has promulgated new regulations, new waistband regulations. Um, and the waistbands, they basically say you can't throw out these things in the trash and it includes things like tires and computer monitors and um, um, appliances and recyclables. So they added, um, effective November 1st, they added mattresses and textiles. Um, all of the transfer stations have a textile recycling container. Um, so for me, the big challenge was trying to figure out what towns are going to do with how do, how are we going to recycle mattresses? And, um, right now the town, so folks who use the transfer station can bring a mattress, they can put it in the bulky waste container. And I look back at last year, um, 113 mattresses were shipped. So that's a good, you know, for a small community, that's a good amount. Hey, Kevin. Welcome. So what I did when I applied for the, um, for the grants each year in June, I apply for uh, grant funding for the communities. And one of the options was to apply for a mattress recycling equipment grant. And um, I was trying to figure out how to make this work for all of the county, for the 21 communities in the, in the um, solid waste district. So what I did was not expecting to get five awards, um, I applied for in Berniston, Coleraine, Deerfield, Montague, and Wendell. And the caveat is in order to get the grant, it has to be a regional, you know, so what DP yeah. wants is they don't want to just give a box to Deerfield and then, you know, people right. in Conway are like, what do I do with my mattress? Yep. So, um, so it's a regional, it has to be a regional um, collection program. So what I've done is, so you, you got it, you received a $10,000 grant award to purchase a storage trailer, like a, like a shipping container, yep. um, a 20 foot shipping container, similar to the one that's there now. And you first drive into the right. Yep. Uh, that was a container we bought many years ago for agricultural plastic. Um, so it would be similar to that. And um, the uh, program that I've designed um, is really for the solid waste district, you know, not to say, you know, hey, Deerfield and Montague, here's your trailer and like you guys deal with it all, right? So, yeah. so what, I've, what I've put together is basically a program where the solid waste district would manage the program. Um, and so uh, the container would be in Deerfield. The attendants would have to monitor or just record any non-residents. So we mm -hmm. knew, we had a sense of how many folks were coming. I imagine your container would serve Conway, uh, Sunderland and Waitley yeah. residents. Um, Conway, 
collects mattresses now and they shipped about 46. So, um, so now we're up to about 150, 160 uh, at our collection in Waitley in May, there were 21. So, you know, we're getting up to a good amount, a couple, yeah. of, maybe a couple of hundred mattresses. Um, the container can hold on average 40 mattresses. So you'd probably ship this maybe six times a year. Um, so hopefully not too burdensome. So what I've done is I've contacted uh, raw materials recycling. They're, they're in Gardner. They're on state contract for mattress recycling. Um, they charge $15 to recycle the mattress. And then there's a, a pickup fee. Uh, so basically you would own the container. You wouldn't have to rent it. The, the hauling fee for Deerfield is three and a quarter. Um, so what I did was I did the math and I said, okay, you know, at 35 mattresses, it would cost $20, $22 a mattress at 45 mattresses. It would cost 25. And I just came from the Burnets and I just gave this yep. presentation to the Burnets and select board. And, and I was confident in the, in charging $30. I said, okay, I think, you know, $30 will cover the recycling costs. However, if it's a dirty mat, a dirty mattress stained or moldy or, you know, um, I said wet, wet, I was thinking um, or we... infested, it has, you know, bed bugs, right. then it has to go into the bulky waste container. Yeah. And right now the charge for that is, as of today is $35. Right. And so burn it's you know, and I've tossed this around, um, but I was trying to make the recycling price kind of match the actual cost. Cause I think it will cost about $25. $25. And uh, their highway superintendent just said, 35 bucks. I, 30, yeah, it's, it's, I got my guys arguing with somebody about whether that's a $30 dollar mattress or a $35 mattress. Right. So as of 30 minutes ago, 35 minutes ago, <laughs> I would propose sense. that we charge $35 and then it's one price. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter. It either goes in the recycling trailer or it goes in the bulky waste box. Right. So the other part of this that I'm proposing is that, that my office, I would actually manage the billing. So you folks would, you know, somebody would call it in, but the bill would come to me. I get to track the mattresses, but then mm -hmm. I would invoice the town just like I invoice for sludge okay. and transfer station hall. Right. Right. So the, my hope is that by doing that, by ha because you're the last site and the other four have all said yes. <laughs> so by having five, drop-offs kind of all <laughs> funneling the, the revenue into the solid waste district. If there's surplus or not, you know, if there's net revenue from this program, I would give that back to the host towns because right. I don't, the solid waste district doesn't need to make money on sure. other towns serving right. other towns. Right. So, um, so we would manage it. You guys wouldn't have to worry about it, but you might get a little bit um, at the end of the year. If there's yeah. surplus. So, uh, you know, the, the, the concern and, um, you know, I think we'll hear from Kevin, but I hope he's okay. I mean, some towns are concerned about having non-residents come in. Um, we have sites right now that are regional sites for paint and oil. Never had an issue with, you know, someone from out of town kind of like bringing their couch along um, and trying to get rid of it when they get rid of their paint cans. So we would do, my office would do all of the public education. We'd make it really clear. This was just for mattresses. Um, we'd be really clear about the, the specs, like what can go in this container. Mm -hmm. um, they can also go to Greenfield Transfer Station. So there is another option. Um, but that's the general sense of the program. If you accept the grant, I can fill in. There's a checklist from DP. I, I'm authorized to fill that out. I'll let DEP know you want to do this. We'll start the process of getting the contract to you folks. Um, and then I can work with raw materials to purchase the trailers, work with Karen to cite it, mm -hmm. get you guys reimbursed. You yeah. know, I'll, I'll follow through the whole grant process um, so, great that, job, so. so that you get all of the, you know, you, so, so Casey doesn't have one more thing to do. Appreciate that um, very Kevin much. Kevin doesn't have one more thing to do. Uh, so total favor. Anybody? Uh, yeah, yeah, some quick I'm questions, I'm completely please. in favor of, um, I think it's a great program. You know, we we put out what, 114, 100 yeah, 116, 15, yeah, yeah. roughly. Um, we, we get a lot of mattresses. We do. I'm trying I'm to figure out where the mattresses up. are coming from, right. but we have been tracking them. We've actually been writing down <clears throat> um, uh, a number on the mattress, so we know who that number belongs to. Yeah. Um. So we so we've been keeping track, and 
Random it's people. not like the same people that bring in mattresses. Um, right. It just completely blows my mind. But I think this is a fantastic program. <clears throat> and this helps out the town dramatically for the simple fact is there's going to be a DEP regulation that's coming in here very shortly. And uh, we We've have a plan for it. And, and she's already laid out everything yeah. for us. So Always. Um, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jan. Doing, doing my job. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. And just one more plug for, for the solid waste management. <clears throat> you guys do a great job at everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You know, um, you help us out. You're doing the best you can with the sludge, the whole marriage, which is a living nightmare. Um, and I think you're doing a fantastic job. So yep. I you. know. I mean, you're really Thanks. wonderful. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Well, I really, I like, like I said, I like my job and you know, this is what you pay me for. So yeah. I get to, it's I get good. to create solutions. You're around three more years, right? At least. Okay. Yes, don't worry <laughs> At <about> least. <laughs> <laughs> I would make a motion to do, uh, to participate. Oh, we got, we got oh, some questions. Some questions. Oh, oh, yeah, motion second, seconded. Yeah, Any no, discussion? Yeah, we. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just had some questions. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, um, how many of our mattresses fit into? Well, I guess we didn't have to worry about it, but did we figure out how many of them were moldy, wet, blah blah? Um, just curious, how many of these things are actually going to go in the bulky waste waste container, mm -hmm. and how much money is going to be generated? From really, it? have no idea. I mean, the, yeah, it's the... going to be dependent on when the people bring it to you. You know, mm -hmm. like if they pull it out of the house and they bring it right there, then you're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, but if they left it out. In the basement for six years, and right. you know that you know they picked it up and half it stayed the stuck. Up or if they're getting rid of it because it's got uh, you know bed bugs or lice right. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and would they even tell you if they had bed bugs? I mean, I'm curious. I mean, and, you can, Kim, you can kind of tell. Yeah. And well, then uh, the other question I had is: Is it a box spring is 35 and a mattress yeah. is 35? Unfor unfortunately, it's <laughs> and it's um, you know the question from Colray. I've been I've been making the rounds. It's kind of fun. I haven't I haven't been out to select boards <laughs> in quite a while, so it's great. Um, it doesn't matter what size; it's the same price yeah. Yeah. for one size you know, fits all. It could yeah. be a twin or a king mattress, and it's 35 bucks. Okay. okay. Um, that's hard for some people. Uh, it doesn't. This doesn't include futons. So, so DEP. This is a very challenging regulation. So, because they made all of these exemptions, so it doesn't include crib mattresses. It doesn't include futons. You know, water beds. Um, so, and you know, I imagine I haven't, I haven't really said this anywhere else. But some people, you you can more easily disassemble. A homeowner could more easily disassemble a box spring mm -hmm. um, than a mattress. So mm -hmm. you could disassemble it and make it. Just make it trash. trash. And yeah. Yep. And, or potentially separate out whatever right. metals right. in there and bring right. it to right. yeah, it. If you were so inclined. Um, yep. But yeah, box spring and mattress. Okay. And then finally, um, this is something that Casey and I, she brought it up to me, but is there, um, is there a way that this could be done online? So say I live in Conway and I know I've got to bring a box spring and a mattress over. I go online to you and then I pay my $70 and I get a little printout that says I've paid my bill. And, and then it is just a decision. Does it go into this container? Or does it go into the junk container? Yeah. I mean, what I don't know if that would be a help for you. Do they, do they take cash on the site? I don't they know. Do no cash. Checks no cash. 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 Checks. Checks. Yeah. And, and so this would allow people to use their, well, in theory, their credit card or their PayPal or their yeah, or, so know, the Solid Waste card. District, it's a great question. Uh, the Solid Waste District has a very basic website. We don't have any, we don't do any transactions because we don't really sell it. You know, we're not selling permits or anything. Tracking is going to be a little difficult for you because you're going to get something from me saying, I've got 15 from this town. I got 12 from this town. I got five from this town. And here's 12 from me. Um, and then you're going to go, okay, well, how many of those have already been paid? Who's paid, who hasn't paid? Or it's, it's either it's all paid ahead of time or yeah billing afterwards right no so so you know I mean? so my vision was that the host sites would collect oh, they yeah. would collect 35 bucks for every mattress and box spring okay you put it in your general fund wherever you want and then i get the bill from raw materials and i send you the bill for that i send you an invoice for that amount okay. so you're paying you're paying out what you collected or the or is in. there any does our does our new improved website have any functionality for paying Something bills like on yeah. it so I don't know if we could incorporate yeah, that. We would I'm, have to ask, but and you it can would be pay work. other bills. Yeah. Well, you can buy your, can you buy your permit, the permit online? I don't think so. I think we have to have, we have Driver's to have information license, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, related to yeah. how we correlate the permit number with the vehicle and the, the yeah. person. Right. I know Northfield site, you have to prepay. So if you have an appliance or something that costs money, you have to 
go onto the town website and, and prepay and pay, and then you get some kind of receipt to bring mm -hmm. to the transfer station. So my concern is how much of an impact do we think this is going to be? We aren't going to know right away. We're just sort of going to have to measure it as we go, right? In terms of the any extra work it, it is for the attendants who have other things right. to do as well. Right. And yeah. So that's, you know, your site, you have, you know, most things are up here um, near the attendant shed, and then you have the recycling down below. And when I've been there, there's been one attendant down kind of at the recycling and one one up above. So depending on where the, the container goes, you know, there would be some mm -hmm. attendant having to yeah, make sure the recycling the person shouldn't be an issue with them going right. over. Right. And the, the final question I have is for both <laughs> you and Kevin is, um, so I come in and I bring my mattress and I put it in the, who puts it in the mattress? Um, it, you'll be assisted because the, okay. that, that, they're heavy, number one. <clears throat> well, one, they're heavy <clears throat> and two, they're locked. Right. It's going to be locked. So anytime, so that way, so, that's, that's what I wanted to know, what the mechanism was. So I bring a mattress, you're going to see it. Right. So you're going to say, this is junk and it's got to go in the bulky one right. where this is right. recyclable and it's going to go in the other container right. and then Correct. you open it. So there is an assist. And it's 35 bucks no matter what. Yeah. Whether it goes, whichever yeah. way right. it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and that was a, that was a question in Corey and they were concerned about the attendant, you know, having to load. So I think each site's going to have its own, make System. its own decision about whether they want the attendant to help load or they want the resident to load. Um, it really comes down also to stacking there. Apparently I've seen pictures, you know, there's very, uh, very clear, uh, design on how to stack it to get the most mattresses in. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. whether that happens in the you end, who knows? Um, we're, we're certainly, you know, this is a new program. I haven't, I haven't designed and implemented a new program in a long time. So I think for, for me, it's, it's, um, it's a start. And then I think we'll just have to see if there are issues and address them. You know, you folks know if anything comes up, I'm going to fix it. So um, if there's an issue, we'll make it work. We'll make it good. It's like a living document. It just continues right. to change and, and right. evolve. And as it does, then yeah. we just adjust as yeah. we need to. I'm not really concerned. Yeah. You'll, I know if, if there's something that we need to do, you'll figure it out. I will figure it out with your help. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, I was I was on vacation and I kept getting I get all these emails and like, what do we do about this grant? Um, I had no I had no expectation DEP would give us five hmm. grants. Um, hmm. So we really we really lucked out uh, yeah, for for getting this for the county. So I appreciate. Sounds like you're supportive, and the other four yeah. four yeah. host towns were all so supportive. We, the motion was to accept the grant. And, yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I so. we have a second. We have discussion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, oh. aye. Oh, did, did who you have singled, something? Who seconded that? I seconded it. Yeah. Okay. Carolyn made Thank the motion. You. Yep. Yeah, so Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank, Thank you so much for um, your work. Before you leave, yes. I, I actually had a question on the ag um, plastic. Uh, is What can we do about that anymore? I mean, can't we, should we write in a letter of appeal or something? I mean, can you... Can you give us like a template letter and then have all the towns? Um, There's no market for it. That's what happened. Uh, yeah. We were, we were, I was um, helping process thousands of, of bag, pellet bags and ag plastic and we were bailing it and it was initially going to Springfield to, um, I can't even think of the name of the company now, um, that was recycling it. They weren't charging us, but they were taking it. They stopped taking it and I was, found another company in Palmer and then they're just nothing. They don't even want the pellet bags. Um, so because the ag is, plastic is, you know, is really dirty and really stinky and wet and has like rotting hay in it, rotting straw or whatever. And um, now it's just building they, up on, you know, yeah, this majority it's horrible. of it is building up. It broke my heart. I mean, I love that program. Yeah. Um, uh, that was fantastic. And yeah. I just feel like for us here in the county, that's, you know, that's one of the things that, well, I mean, if you could figure out up and down the valley, all three counties, yeah. that would be huge. You, Maybe you know, even, we, even you know, all four. I guess, I guess they wouldn't last, but I was like, wow, I wonder if they could come up with like a compostable bag, you know, cause that, cause that's the issue is it, the, the farmers use the, the plat. I mean, it's convenient to have the plastic. It's important for them, but, but 
then there's no there's no way to reuse well, it or in recycle. all your spare time if you so, could come up with a template letter to get rid of you know for us to appeal to whoever okay. for ag plastic and um you know the containers the six pack containers you know from flower growers if you can figure out oh, yeah um black plastic yeah some way to um make them compostable subsidized compostable or whatever yeah that'd be cool we would we would definitely love a letter campaign for that okay all right because i i feel like you know the plastic pots and the plastic six packs and the you know ag plastic is it's, it's you know a lot of plants a lot of potting stuff oh, Man, yeah. there's so much you never know everybody it's, throws them in the recycling bin but they're not recyclable yeah, right? right yeah that's correct yeah tons of them in there yeah so yeah. what happens at the other end of the food chain where all this black plastic and non-recyclable material goes to these places do they just shunt it off to the side and send it to some oh. uh burnable burn factory well, or something or yeah whatever. i mean all of the recyclables so the bottles and cans and the right. paper but the bottles and cans which you typically have the the plastic pots goes to um recycling facility in springfield and it's mechanically sorted and hand sorted right and, and so then, they're literally hand sorting it and then it goes to a, a landfill trash. to a disposal facility. so they they actually take the stuff that's shouldn't yeah, be in and there and right to a and, landfill. And it, yep we're when people throw it in there then our then our recycling is not diminished. Used. Yeah, it's we 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 don't. I don't you're want to say you're hauling stuff that can't be recycled. Correct, and you're taking not, volume out of that thing. Yeah, that you can't, no, they also consider that contaminated materials. Too. Right. Yes. So, so you, you get to a certain you, amount of contaminated materials that they will refuse to load. Right. Yes, so. and that's one of the reasons you don't want people to recycle the plastic is because then we get too many you know, contaminated recycling. Right. But if I can I add one more thing, and if you guys could help us out with uh, rinsing your plastics before they actually go to the recycling, mm -hmm. that helps out big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, not only does it keep it more sanitary for everybody that goes there, but then the person that has to stand next to the box that's 120 degrees and <laughs> rotting stuff bad enough up top, but... Mm. Right. that's it's why also we right, take the guys back and forth yeah right now is a big b you know it's a big b season um mm. and the bees love that bottle and can container mm -hmm. um, oh for sure so, yeah, yeah yep. trying to trying and to rinse out sugary things is helpful mm -hmm. we can't spray if we have a problem up there we have to call in an exterminator by massachusetts state law yeah yep so wow I know, Kevin. The new well, crash was so complicated. Anyway. <laughs> yes, and, and, and you know, I've, I've said this before. I'd be happy to stay here. I could talk about trash all night, but I know, <laughs> I know there are other things on the agenda. So thank yep. you so much. I'll, I'll get the initial yes. paperwork submitted so nice and then you'll you see again. a contract. Yeah, yeah so likewise. good to see you and have you all right. come join us. Labor okay. Day. Yep. Yes, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Well, yep, here. we'll see you around. Bye. Thank you, Nicole. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. You know, actually, I'm, I'm hoping to be out of here. I, do, yep. do you guys have anything for me? Because my youngest Thank daughter's you, home and nope. like to spend a little time we're, with her. Go, like yeah. in the bank, walking away. Oh, with a pen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Have a good night. Bye, Thanks Jan. for coming to this. Yeah, yep. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Kevin. So uh, the ne next item is the South County Senior Center Administrative uh, Office lease. Um, there is some work that needs to be done to the lease, but there's an example in here. I just read it the other day uh, or today. And like the Deerfield Council on Aging would be changed to the town of Deerfield? Not necessarily, because that's actually how things get referenced. Um, we went through this with the Holy Family family lease. So Jennifer and I both looked at it, Remillard, and we're going to go back and look at it. I have to, I have a note from legal counsel about this, but in some ways, the Council on Aging reference is used legally. So we would, if we can take it out, we will. If, mm -hmm. And the date will probably change to the 15th. Right. Um, but we have to send the final from us over to all states. Um, what we needed to be able to do is get an endorsed, an endorsement from the select board right. so that Jennifer and I can complete the lease. Like, um, but we had the same question come up with Holy Family because of the COA reference. Right. And I wonder, is the COA reference on the family one? Yes. Oh, it is. There is a reference, yes. Okay, I was asking Brenda, and she, oh, that's that needs to say town of Deerfield, but maybe. Well, it, it, okay. well, that's yeah. the thing. It's I that saw discussion. that you had made the note, so yep. I'm going to go back and look, um, okay. and I'll compare Sounds the good. two. Yep. Um, and yeah, and it's Delta Sand. It's not all states. It's, it is Delta they, Sand. Yep, yeah. different different company. No, I was just yep. I didn't know if they were 
combined something. No, no, no. In this case, Warner, it's Delta Warner Sands. Owns this. Yeah. Craig, Craig owns Delta Sands. Well, I, I didn't realize all states because they're all like all sort of combined. Yeah, exactly. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this is a different different company. All right. Um, so I guess maybe we should explain a little bit for the public and, and everyone here what what the boo is looking to do. Our 1888 building is um, is not. Um, in the condition that we can hold our senior center there, our staff cannot be there. Um, so, and, and we're kind of in the midst of starting to work on it. So mm -hmm. we need another space right now. We're not ready uh, for the church. We may have a little backup on working on that. And we're not even sure that the boo wants to be in that church. Right. So anyways, uh, through, through meetings with the boo and Jennifer's been working on this, we looked around for different areas that we could, um, rent. And we looked at, um, there was some, some property over at the, um, Holy family that was some offices there, but it did, really didn't work out. There was no handicapped ramp. There was no, mm -hmm. there was no real access that was going to be good for them. Um, we tried to look at different areas. One of the other really important things from the booth standpoint is to really bring services out to the other communities. It's always kind of viewed as a Deerfield, mm -hmm. you know, even though it is, we all have always viewed it as South County Senior Center and all those communities, are, you know, Waitley and Sunderland are partake in it. It's always been in Deerfield and we've always talked about how do we get programming out to these other communities this space, which is called the Tea Trekker, it was the old Tea Trekkers. It used to be an old package store. My grandfather used to take me to and get Slim Jims when I was little. So, it anyways, was a bike store at one it time. was a bike store at one time. Yep. So, going back, it's in Sunderland, kind of just before the Frosty and just before the post office. It's right, right there on Main Street or 116. Um, has space to to be able to run our food um, distribution Correct. out of space for our refrigerators and shelving that we can put all of our food in. They can do book clubs. They can do small events. They can't do a large event there. It's not big enough for that, but there is enough room. There would be private uh, offices for yes. people to interview or yes. have consultations with our director or, or the outreach, outreach. coordinator mm -hmm. and still have some privacy. Um, so it gives them some space to do that and to bring programming out to the other communities. And I think Waitley is also talking about when they they're reorganizing their town hall and they're looking maybe to have some space for um, South County senior services at some point mm -hmm. in some section of their town hall mm -hmm. so that they could, you know, do different programs in different areas. And hopefully uh, Jennifer's done an amazing job of like, she's, she's sharing creating, that out now. She's creating, really doing a good yeah. job of, of, of citing things in the other two towns so that yep. there can, it's more inclusive. Right. And with the new senior center, uh, new senior housing going in in Sunderland, you know, this is, pretty close to there too. So, so there could be, we could draw more people in and expand the, um, the participation into the center. Um, my biggest concern is the cost. It's $1,800 a month. Plus it's going to need trash pickup, you know, vacuuming, what all that kind of stuff to deal with. And I don't have a figure on that yet, but I just, you know, i see in the lease that it was like, we'll mow the lawn. You're going to need to shovel the walkway. So, you know, I want to talk to Tom Hake and the highway guys in Sunderland go over Actually, and shovel up. Actually, the town administrators that kind of are talking about They that. are. Okay. Yes. So I figured there was some discussion mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. With we're that we're kind talking of stuff to Jennifer, as sort of winter. going back and forth about that. Okay, good. So um, what about cleaning? Yeah, that kind of thing. I haven't discussed that with Jennifer. It yep. hadn't come up. The, I, she was on vacation for a little while and then it's been right. busy in the office. So, so we I should, haven't asked that question. I don't know can't. if it's something Rick goes over and does because he used to do this building all the time. Or, right. or So we'll have to talk about that. Um, but you're right. There's those kind of other things that um, I, I'm just concerned of $1,800 a month. I think we can swing this for a year um, and it gives us time. Uh, we do have some funding left over um, from last year that could support this um, along with renting Holy Family right now. So um, what it also does is sets the, um, it sets the senior center up to understand that we need to pay rent in the future. And really um, we have not paid rent for years because it's been a building that we've kind of just let open. We weren't using it. So we're like, hey, we're not gonna mothball it. Let's do a program in there. But when we get like South County C EMS, um, when we get a facility at some point, we are gonna need to collect rent to, 
to maintain it, you know? So um, there's a mechanism in the IMA, but even the town administrators, and I know the booze talked about it as well. We really probably need to go back and look at the IMA and make some changes to yep. it. So it mirrors more closely how South County EMS is set up. Well, yeah. What time is the boo meeting on Monday? The, the boo meeting on the 29th is at five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And that's to kind of accept that. And it's a joint yeah. meeting of the select board in Deerfield and the board of oversight. Right. So you can have a more in-depth conversation about some of these I, questions. I mean, this is a, you know, what has happened because, you know, we closed the building up from COVID and I mean, I certainly understand it, but, um, you know, we don't support the senior program very well and right. to suck up $1,800 a month. I know for rent is, I don't feel like that's really sustainable. It's not, I, it's a one year thing. Yeah. I, I mean, we need to invest in our, for our seniors mm -hmm. and renting out office space for $1,800 a month is not helping our seniors that much. Nope. It is not. I, I feel that, I mean, well, I'm, the only I'm upside, supportive. I'm supportive because the only it's temporary. Upside is, is that if there is some, you know, Sunderland, the programming, that can encourage Sunderland seniors to come there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once we find a more permanent solution, the no community way. would. You're already building capacity yeah, and you're um, building support. So, it's true. So yes, it is a lot of money though. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I just. It's not sustainable at that number do, and the Holy Family on top of it. So is, we really need that a, a space somewhere. I know. So this just, is something that we need to endorse and remember. act on now because it starts September 1st. Well, September 15th, actually. I didn't get yeah. a chance to oh, get yeah. to yours. She marked me I, I marked up their, their, theirs. 15th. I didn't yeah. get a chance to mark up yours. Um, Jennifer and I talked about pushing it back to the 15th and then clarifying. There's a couple things that she and I were yeah. clarifying. Um, but what we really need the board to do is endorse us being able to execute the lease so that they can move forward. Right. to reach for the 15th and in terms of packing and being ready to move. I feel like it's the right thing to do with the, with the momentum we have right now with Jennifer running the center and the good things that we have going on. I am very concerned about the bill. So this year we really have to focus on an alternative space where we can make it more affordable and it may not be as wonderful, but it, we need us, we need office space. And you know, I, I don't think we could sustain doing that long term. Maybe there's ways that they could work with the library and send them to do programs once a month there or something like that. Or I, I'm not sure how to work it, but I do like the idea of bringing programs out to the different communities. And, I, I don't but, have a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, when they have a community space in their senior housing. Right. So, you maybe know, there's something this like kind that. It makes total sense. It's yeah. just $1,800 yeah. for office space. Yep. is a month and it's this not is... a good investment in our seniors our nope, seniors need money to be spent on them so that will help yep. them with their quality of life i mean i i have no problem temporarily because yeah. we don't have a choice we don't have but, a space for anybody right so a, i'm fine but no the reality i hear you. Completely is hear you we need to we do need to make sure that there is a plan yeah, yeah. so i just want to make sure that what we're saying is that this is a year lease and whether yes. we are in it six months or a year we're paying the whole twenty one thousand six hundred dollars is there a way out of this if some miracle we occurs? needed six uh it is a one-year lease it's a one-year lease and then we need to notify them 60 days before the end right. we could extend it right or we a could higher price yes i think it's yeah. up 2.5 2. 2.5 yeah, percent growth yeah, yeah. And then but I, it, I will say they tried to make an effort to work with us as a municipality within sort of the limitations that, and, and this is really Jennifer talking to them, Jennifer yeah. Remillard working with them. Um, but they did really try to make a, an effort to work within the parameters that towns really face. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, um, they're not even really making what they might make in market. Um, yep. And so it's, I do think short term, this can give the administrative staff a, a better ability to, pro to provide access to services. But Jennifer is very aware of the fact that a more continue. permanent solution needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons she wants the BOO and the Deerfield Select Board to sort of talk about this. Yeah. There really probably will need to be a, a wider discussion yeah. 
Um, but it, it is something that is progressive. It's not going to happen. It can't all happen at the snap of a yep. finger. So this also means that the three towns are going to be paying proportionally for this eighteen hundred dollar a month. Yes, and, and in the fact that yes, that we they we do have funds that all three towns have paid into, into last year mm -hmm. that we'll be using for that. Right. From yeah, it's no, no new money that we're raising to do it. It's money right. we this still is have, money but that's existing. it's money I much, as you said, would much rather spend on programming or something like that. But right. without them having a space Just to operate, food, um, food know, or yeah, there's all kinds sure of things we could use. Food, you know, the monthly food give out is yeah. is more yeah more food. Right. I, I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I just. It is. It's, well, it's a disappointing spot bring to up be at in. The meeting on the 29th. Yeah. That's yeah. a great thing to start. I know. Because yeah. I, I, so I do. I, I want to bring that up. I think food security is a huge issue. And that we should be spending our money more on food for our seniors yeah. rather than, you know, office. So well, my, the reason it's I brought the question. timing up was, can we talk about this on the 29th and yeah. still meet the, or do we have to do this tonight? Well, I think we could. We do need to execute quickly so that we I, can get this done. I think if if you so five days from now is too late. Well, I think no. I, I don't think know that if how... you take it and talk to council on the name change, change the date, um, have it all set. We to have go, to repost the agenda. And then we would it. have to repost the agenda. You are currently posted for a joint meeting. We would have to repost that agenda so that we add this item to that agenda. Just add it onto the agenda. It's not just your agenda. It's a joint agenda for both committees. Oh, so all of them would have to add So it. do we know if the other towns have accepted this or we don't know because we're the person who's going to do it? This, isn't, this yeah. isn't theirs to accept. We're yeah. the fiduciary. Yeah, it's our so choice it's only. it's our responsibility. Oh, okay. They are aware of it because yeah. Jennifer's okay. discussed this with the boo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in this case, like, Trevor's bringing it back to you both as a member of the select yeah. board, but also a member of the board of oversight. Yeah. So if you want to take it to that meeting, I can let Jennifer know. Um, I was just asking if, you know, and, and, and partly to learn the process because, mm -hmm. so thank you for the, the fiduciary executes yeah, yeah, in yeah. this case. It's thank like, you for explaining. Yeah. Yeah. It's like EMS. Yeah. Like the no, that, that's fine. Yeah. So, so if you want me to let her know, I can send her an email as you guys go to other Trevor? discussion. The only topic. thing that really, um, I mean, I, my intention is to move forward. I don't see any hiccup. I just, the only thing I would just, if you would check on the, the name that is on yep. the lease, um, do they have the, do they have like, the, I don't think the Council on Aging has money. So um, it's really us that's paying the bill. So maybe in Deerfield Council on Aging, um, or it Deerfield says, Town on behalf of, or that's, something it like that. that. It says, oh, it does. It buy and through the town of Deerfield. <laughs> Let me put my glasses on. Deerfield Council that. Aging that's buy and mean. through the town of Deerfield. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with that then. I'm, I'm fine with that. I didn't realize it. Yep. I need, I need All right, glasses. so do you want me to let um, Jennifer know that you want to talk about this on the 29th? No, I mean, no, I, I'm good. I, I'll make a motion to move, um, forward. move forward with this lease arrangement. Uh, okay, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we can, we'll talk about it more, I mean, not talk about the process more on that day, but Right, not, but not, on the 29th, I mean, you guys are yeah. gonna have a conversation. Yeah, that's if, all. We're still moving forward. So. I, I just think it's, either really, way. Yep. I just think it's really important to specify that this is a lot of money. Yeah, and it can't, and it can't continue. We've yeah. gotta find a different it, way or, to make it work. I feel it's a more appropriate to spend our money on our seniors in a different manner. No doubt. And, you know, yeah. I, I just, but I guess the is, determination was made that even after um, whatever work is going to be done on the, the church, the new section of the church, that mm -hmm. we would still need this additional space. The Wu has made that determination that for administrative reasons, we'd need the additional space. Um, so in other words, if that work gets done in three months, um right i think i think we would for the for the short term right instead mm -hmm. of uh, moving back and forth but there, yeah there's a lot of work that would need to get done there yeah, and obviously everything better out. to move everything once yes back and, and right and then stay there for the period yes and then, that's what we felt yeah to the one year and then have enough time to get everything get set that there yeah. and make sure it's acceptable and i think that's a discussion for the boo as well and all of us 
can we make that? If we made it acceptable, would they be interested in moving in there? Really... And so that's actually the question. And that's where we really need to get at, yeah. you know, what's the long-term future of the boo? And do mm -hmm. we all still want to partner together and do this thing? Is there right. plans for other towns doing something different? You know, mm -hmm. just get it all on the table. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, there was a placeholder for Leary lot. I don't know if there's anything to report on that. Um, yet or not. I have a couple of things. So okay. I checked in with FSI appraisal. We had sent them the survey so they can start developing the appraisal for the property we're discussing with Hampshire Lumber that could be a sale or a swap. Okay. Um, I checked in this morning and they haven't finished it. They're going to get it to me once it's done. And then so, we're going to share so they, it. With they Hampshire. are aware that we have the timeline of, of town meeting. Disposal of the property is one thing, and that's my next point. Um, we need, in order for us to do anything, we have to know what the value is, right? Because mm -hmm. it affects procurement and it affects what it what we can do. So there's already a placeholder on the warrant to request town meeting approve the select board sale or some function of disposal. Um, I haven't finished the wording mm -hmm. um, of the property okay. to Hampshire. So that piece of it, the placeholders in, is there. Okay. Um, there's several questions that Tim had for Lisa. So I sent Lisa an email and I said, look, let's sit down and talk about this because there's an element, uh, there's nuances there that mm -hmm. I want to get, especially in terms of timeline, because you have submissions for work on the property that Hamshaw is going to do. You have mm -hmm. submissions we would have to deal with in terms of Leary Law. And you who have owns what? The question mm -hmm. of the road. There's a lot. It may of, take longer. There's yeah. a lot of nuance to this. So I want a better conversation so that I can report back to the board more in depth. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But my also my my sense is that FSI, when I first had my initial contact with them, they were aware that we're looking at an October. Okay. special town meeting and the communication that he sent to Casey and I was that, you know, he's the signed contract has been delivered. They guaranteed to deliver within, was it three to four weeks? Three to four weeks. Yeah. Could happen sooner. Yep. Um, okay. And they're, they're aware of some other issues that are important to the town. Which... All right. Thank you, Tim. Thank I, you. I just want to yep. make sure that they're aware of well, that. Casey so... is handling this now. I mean, we, yep. we pushed it forward. So I think we're going to, reasonably good as good a spot as we can be yeah Play okay. by ear. um sewer bylaw amendment proposal regulation special act of 1935 acts 343 for discussion so this is a re as we talk about what happens with old deerfield mm -hmm. um it's been made clear via council to tim and me to tim and i that we need to really address the sewer bylaw. It needs to be updated. There's certain limitations in what the town can do based on the special act. So okay. Lisa recent, she went back and reviewed the bylaw. We're going to have to have regulations in addition to the bylaw. Correct. Because the bylaw governs creation of the system. Regulations really govern How operation of right. the system. And then the 1940 or the 1935 act establishes the system. Right. So these are the background documents that I think you'll need to have for a good conversation moving forward. Yeah. And so before the meeting, I'll just, I'll just reiterate to people that you had asked me if we could get council to come to a meeting. So with, um, with I engineers. will ask and see if she can come to a meeting or even a zoom. Zoom like is fine. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be it, here. Just... It doesn't matter how that works. Yeah. I just need to know what her availability yeah, exactly. is because we'd we'd want to we'd want you guys to, to meet and talk about this mm -hmm. as the group. Yes. Because you have policy decisions you need yep. to make. But fundamentally, if we don't do a, an amendment to the bylaw and then regulations, we could be in jeopardy of not being compliant with general law chapter 83, which governs sewer. Okay. on a state level yeah i know that she had mentioned a while back we really need to get on this and it kind of just fell off it, the map it wasn't we're something dealing that, with construction it, and we stuff. sort of weren't in a place where we yeah. understood how the, the impacts were going to be yep and this I wasn't addressed before you started south deerfield so yep. she went back and she reviewed some of those things and this draft does include um a reference to betterments yep 
depending on how you want to move forward with some of these repairs and stuff. Yep. So, so I did send her an email. I will let you know what she comes back and says. And then if we have to set up a meeting, I'll ask you all. And then you were going to maybe send that um, digitally so I could. I did. Yeah, oh, you did. Thank you so good. much. Yep. That's awesome. <clears throat> and Great. also um, in the conversation we had with Lisa, the regulations um, can be adopted after these other two right. things. And okay. they also need to be more, they need to be reviewed by Eric. Yeah, um, and Kevin the engineers and the engineers to see does wording need to be changed? Do are there sure. new regulations, federal requirements, state requirements that yep. that this current like reg, you know? And language. are there quantities that we right. need to update? Okay, <laughs> great. Um, Tim, did you want to talk on your questions about the special act that you might? Oh no, I I, I would say that um, Lisa's advice on the 1935 act is that. It's our it's our act. It's our home rule act. Mm -hmm. So, the if we want to adjust it in any way, she says the chances are very good that it will be accepted. You know, in whatever legislative session we get it to. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of the things um, that are in this, for instance, this this envisions starting a sewer system. So there was a limit of one hundred eighty thousand dollars, which of course doesn't have any. <laughs> basis in reality for today. Not now. It was late so pipe only. her suggestion was <laughs> some, things like that you would take out. You would change the word board of selectmen to select board to agree with our current Correct. language. Yeah. And then you might omit things like you you might live it leave in the total discretion of the town how much the town would be responsible for in each project. For you know, so going yeah. forward, it wouldn't affect the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant decisions that have already been made. Right. But and going forward, um, the next time we have to revisit the, or the people who will come after us yep. revisit this, they will be uh, empowered to make decisions about whether people who have septic systems will actually have to pay mm -hmm. part of their real estate money to fund these projects. Correct. Um, okay. And there could be valid reasons why they'd want that, you know, encourage business, et cetera. Sure, sure. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. One thing I would say is if we want to make an adjustment to the special act and we want to do it sooner rather than later, there's a couple of things you should know. So any, the amendment for the sewer bylaw, the recommendation is to hold a hearing. I would, I would say the recommendation, if you want to make, just to bring it to the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's more, it's a democratic and transparent way to get people involved in the conversation. And I think you would get some involvement. Oh, for sure. Um, if there was an intent for the select board to go back and address the act itself, um, that's a home rule petition that would have to go through town meeting. So depending on what kind of timeline you're looking at, right. um, we might want to consider trying to address that language. And again, it's, it's very transparent to hold a hearing related to that. Right. Here's your issue. Your timeline is relatively short, but if we don't have proscribed, uh, and maybe that's the wrong word, Tim, but if there isn't a specific requirement for posting, we might be able to do something like that. These are the policy decisions the board has to address, and it yeah. has to be addressed relatively soon. And I just need to get my head around it sure, a little sure. better. It's just yeah. So so you know, obviously, people need to read these things and. Um, probably have read them in the past because these same issues came up in 2018 and 19 mm -hmm. and the, the 1935 act was something that everybody reviewed but my feeling is that we need to do this now um, particularly the 1935 act and the, the bylaw and um, that we should definitely if we don't make it we have two months mm -hmm. and um, public hearings on this um, we could adjust the language before the, uh, we could adjust the language. You, you know, guys could but, approve a public hearing. And frankly, you could do that. You could do that at a public hearing. You do both at a public hearing. Yeah. I mean, so, but I do feel like, you know, at our, our next, our next regular board meeting is the seventh. Yes. That we should make a decision at least on moving the, uh, and I think tonight, um, Lisa's prepared to, to make these adjustments. And I would, particularly on the 1935 Act, I would like her to make these suggestions that she thinks we should follow. Yeah, I agree. Like know those. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And then on the 7th, we can act on right. you know, saying Setting yes. hearing date. So yeah. what might be great is if the board would endorse us sending, uh, sending a request to Lisa to 
amend the act with suggestions. So you can get it back by yep. the seventh. And right. then yeah. um, it would be a good idea if you have comments to that or things you want to change, you could, we could get it back to her. But fundamentally, if you're going to set a hearing date, we need to have at least a substantially complete document to read. Yeah. Right. And um, we need to have that meeting after the, the, the fourth. We, we have to have that, that document in hand for the, the seventh anyway. So. Right. right. Um, but it's just getting the ball rolling. Yeah. So I, I would, I do, I, I think I that she should that. look at that yeah. and, and add some suggestions. And then if we could have a Zoom with her to kind of like, what are we talking about here? These are the things I recommend. This is why I recommend them. And so the, to that other point, which is the amendment, if there's any review to the um, related to the bylaw amendment that needs to go to the engineers, it would be a really good idea to send it to them. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know that there's much they need to look at in the, um, in, the in the bylaw itself. It's more the regulations. Right. But if there is anything we want their input on, yeah. If the board endorses sending that out, now's a good time to do it. So they, they, yeah, for sure. So they come I, in. yeah, I would like to say a suggested course of action. Let's authorize Lisa to amend the 1935 act in, we had some discussion about Casey and I had discussion with Lisa on Tuesday about this, but um, let her make the suggestions that she thinks are pertinent to the night the 2022 yep and um and get that back to us as soon as possible i'll second and that I, I don't so okay so yep second any all other discussion in, nope all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn that's aye. and okay. then secondly i would like to suggest that we send the, the bylaws that um, lisa's firm has prepared for us to consider to the engineers now to see if they have any feedback that that Lisa We're could missing. benefit from. Yep, I'll second that too. Any yep. any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Great. Is there Perfect. anything else we're missing, Casey? At this point, no. The regulations would come afterward because yeah. remember, even as a general bylaw, it's got to go to the AG's office for review. Of course. Yep. And frankly, she thinks it wouldn't be a, a heavy lift for that. Um, on the other hand have our ducks in a row and make sure that we've demonstrated that we're really inviting the public to participate in yeah. this conversation. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Okay, yep. great. Excellent, thanks. Thank you. Um, there was a uh, telecommunications public records request policy. I don't right. know if you're ready on that or do you? So I'm ready on one, let me explain. So telecommuting is gonna have to be impact bargain. I am talking to council about that because we have two municipal unions that may want to weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I will tell you, however, is as we move forward in this new operational model of hybrid and remote meetings, we still need people to moderate. So um, one thing that we could do is, and, and you know, it's really a functional operational thing, notify the unions if they want to have a conversation we can set up that conversation with the respective department heads and council if necessary and get their feedback. For moderating but a meeting? For telecommuting. Um, telecommuting sort of goes to other things. It's not just moderating meetings, but telecommuting goes to working, for instance, if we have another emergency where we need to deploy personnel differently like we did with COVID where mm -hmm. people were, you know, we were At closed for a while and people were here. And, yeah. We need to have a policy like this in place because this is actually the operational change that's really become a fundamental change across the board uh, for everyone. So having this policy is important, but the other piece of that is, is we have to make, I need some operational, um, I, I need the ability to make these operational decisions when people come to me with questions and in order to make sure that we can still serve the public, but do so in a way that's safe for everybody, mm -hmm. especially if there's a need to have somebody do something from home, like moderate a meeting or, mm -hmm. you know, they need to be able to just be able to focus like me. Sometimes I get more work done in an hour when nobody's in front of me oh, than yeah. all day sometimes. Yeah. So, however, what we, what the board could do is, you know, I can deal with the communication with the unions and just have the board agree that maybe we come back to the table and review it for a possible adoption um, effective October 5th. So we'd have a first read at 
so upcoming meeting. So you have and a first can, read. Yeah. This is what we would produce. If there's something that comes back from the unions, we would produce that for you and you can yeah. go back and review it. Okay. Um, the other one is the public records access policy. So we haven't discussed it for a while, but the public records access policy, this policy is really based on the framework that we receive from the state related to how we respond to public records requests. Um, and it outlines certain things. But one thing that has been a problem since I started is the fact that the records access officer has been the town administrator. Mm -hmm. We don't have the capacity in that office right. to really, these are pretty in-depth things. And frankly, if there's something that comes to whoever the rec records access officer is, um, whichever office it pertains to, there's going to be a delegation to gather and then provide it to a records access officer. So there's right. going to be an intersect. There always is. Um, but in this case, we have a very competent town clerk who's sitting here watching you guys. Her name is Carlene Hamlin. Hi. Wait, Carlene. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she and I have had this conversation, but formally the board would have to change the policy to address making the records access officer, the town clerk, mm -hmm. before we could implement that change. I, I, I would move to do that. Carlene, do you have any comments for yeah. that? Do you want to weigh in at all, Carlene? We're setting you up for extra work. She's looking for her unmute button. Yep, she is. There she goes. Welcome. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm going to turn up that. I'm going to straighten myself up. Um, it, I, 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 um, it previously, I can just weigh in, you know, from a community of 22,000 that all record access, um, officers usually are your town clerks or city clerks. Um, yeah. so, um, I'll share that information with you. I can just tell you from, um, my office, um, our office, this week alone, the town clerk um, has received four uh, public records requests. Public records um, over probably the last two years um, has taken a giant leap um, forward in um, significant impacts to cities and towns. I said, I used to send the legislative committee that not only looked at this, but looked at a set of laws that the legislature keeps massaging yep. in your packet. I, I took a brief um, uh, snapshot of what you guys were going to be talking about tonight and just sitting here tonight, just wanting to get a, a, a pretty good eye on um, where you guys are going, especially with your special town meeting in October. But Looking at this, you can see um, Casey's done her due diligence in giving you everything of what a public records access officer is responsible for. And in, in larger cities and towns, sometimes that's a position onto itself. Yep. Um, what usually happens with a records access officer, why the responsibility falls on a city or a town clerk is that they have the ability, they usually touch every office, so they know those um, departments are responsible for, and they um, can field those um, uh, requests out to those departments, making sure that the town administrator or administration is aware that these um um, uh, requests are coming in, but they also bear the responsibility of making sure that those requests are met within 10 days um, and that those departments are complying in um, ensuring that they meet those responses if they can. And if not, um, most city and town clerks know how to respond underneath those laws and um, responding back to the requester that we either don't have the documents or that uh, we're going to extend out to the supervisor for uh, an extension of 25 days. So we're all skilled on understanding exactly what those requests are and how to answer them. That's pretty primarily, I think, why the laws were created to create that a public records access um, officer is a town or city clerk. Right, right. That's good. No, I, 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 I agree. I think it, that's where it should sit. So I would make that motion to um, adopt this policy unless there's any other. Well, I'll make that motion. Do... Second. Second. Any further discussion on this matter? 
No, I think it's the right thing to do. I do have a question about um, some of the language here. Sure. It says, with a population of 1,754. Oh, it's probably. Year, you can make me correct that after you. Yeah, approved. please. Yeah. No, I would <laughs> corrections as needed. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that that's it. No, and I think and that what we can do. Like, I think I, clear yeah. to, there's a reference in here. Sorry, Carlene. Um, that's okay. There's a reference in here to. Uh, being able to charge an hourly fee for research and and necessary man hours to, to do this. Um, presumably the town clerk is one of the higher paid and, but it allows for $25 per hour. So I'm just asking if that's- easy. Usually it's the lowest, correct me if I'm wrong, Carlene, it's usually the lowest paid person that can perform the research so and the, compliance. The clerk would oversee the gathering of the information, but might employ somebody else who has a lower correct hourly rate. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and you have you have that absolutely spot on, Tim. So we say it's a request from the billing department that they're looking for a set of plans or whatever the case may be. Most department heads, um, you know, through the administration, admi the administration would set up those guidelines for pay cycles but it would be the lowest paid staff member um, that would just call all that information together, pull it together. And usually, um, and it will, Casey and I can talk about steps moving forward on how to handle this once, you know, these, um, if this is, you know, you approve this moving forward is that, um, you know, that information would be ga gathered by the lowest uh, paid staff member and then divvied out. Remember that most um, records are kept electronically, so there wouldn't be really fees unless it's a, um, um, a pretty um, uh, uh, in-depth records um, request, and then you know that would have to really be um, mulled over and weighed out on how much that would cost. Okay, thank you. Um, well, a motion in the we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And thank you for your help on this very much. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, super, yeah. super helpful. Um, so the other, and then the other telecommuting one, we're just going to kind of continue to work so on. So what, it, basically what I'd want the board to consider it. is um, revisiting it, but adopting, consider adopting it effective October 5th. Okay. So we can now read this this week and then come back on the seventh and yeah okay, okay great. good yeah I was going to say let's do that you were suggesting that um, that the unions need to weigh in on this does it they make sense to. to weigh yeah. in on it before we yes that was well yeah. that was so the thing I was going to send them, and, it, yeah. so John will do something and I'll do something similar where you just notify them send it to them and say hey yeah you know here's, okay. here's so some on. here's the process we're going to employ to impact bargain this yeah yep sounds good um we have appointments resignations we have lisa mittens appointment to the personnel board so She's lisa present. lisa talked about this at the personnel board last week um she would like to clarify her appointment she really wants to be able to um cycle off the personnel board by january 1st okay so i actually put on January 1st, but she would actually like to be able to have the board clarify her appointment term to be from as of today's date through December 31st, 2020. Okay. I mean, I mean, wouldn't she just send a resignation and she's appointed for the year, correct? Already? She, she would prefer to give it a, a, a <laughs> she wants date something certain solid. Certain. <laughs> well, what they're doing, what what they're really doing as personnel board, they're really making an effort to have us send out social media messaging to let people know that there's a need for personnel, people okay. on personnel board. Um, we're very lucky to have David Sharp from the finance committee. Um, we have Eric Farrell, who's a new appointee. Good. Um, but we did lose people. Yeah. And it's it would be helpful if you know, she's, she's made a huge contribution in the time yes, she's been there, absolutely. but she wants to move on to do other things. Okay. So this request is, I didn't think the board would have an issue with it. Nope, um, I, don't. It's fine. I just wanted it. I asked her to give me some clarity on what she was interested in. And that's what she said. Just thinking, cause I didn't, there's really no statute in us doing this. Um, I mean, generally you appoint in June and then they 
And right. Whenever they want to resign, they resign. Right. So but seven in this misses. case, to clarify, she would like you guys to take that vote. All right. I guess we'll accept the resignation as of December 31st. Right? No, I think I would just say to clarify the term. And okay. I'll have to so we're going to clarify up. the term of Lisa Mitten's appointment to the personnel board from the current date, which she had been appointed appointed back in Before. June uh, to um, December 31st, 2022. Thank you. And I'll second it. Uh, yep. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nelson, aye. Okay. There's a first read for diversity, equity, inclusion statements and examples. We have oh, one we have more one. Thing. No, I'm, I'm skipping that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not allow it happening. It's not, good. not allowed. Yeah. Uh, let me get to it here. Hang on one second. <laughs> it may take me a while. <laughs> I know. Stretch this I out a little bit. She, she, she waves. See, she's waving at you. <laughs> I'm stretching it out here, Jennifer. What if we vote no? Yes, we can <laughs> vote no. Can we admonish? <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, I've conveniently lost it, Jennifer. I'm sorry. We're just going to so have to move on. Jennifer has tendered her resignation. Oh, here it is. I got it. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so, um, Jennifer, I just want to say you've been a complete pleasure to work with. Um, you've done so much to help our town, and um, really excited for your future. It sounds like an, an exciting opportunity for you. We're heartbroken you're leaving, you know that, but um, I wish you nothing but the best. You're an amazing employee. I am employee. coming in. I am coming in and getting help with the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few you tasks leave. you need to There's a thing that you, you have to, to do with help we me with you. that webpage. <laughs> anything you need, anything you need. Great. I do have your number. <laughs> you, you, you all have my number, and yeah. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Please so, just call yes. me anytime. It's, really, we're really happy for you, but yeah, I very say, sad you're uh, leaving for uh, sure. Very sad you're leaving. Um, Thank so, you, and I, I'll do everything I can to you know prepare my predecessor and yep. help Casey with this transition. And thank I thank you all. Yep. Is it a shorter commute or a longer commute? It's actually a shorter commute. Is it? Well, good for you on yep. both fronts. Yep. So we, um, I would make a motion to regretfully accept the resignation of uh, Jennifer Gannett for her last day of employment with the town of Deerfield will be September 7th, 2022. And I'll second that regretfully. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. I guess I too. I didn't say you want to abstain. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll abstain. I feel very sad. <laughs> yeah, but very excited for your future. I am sure. excited that for you. That is going to be fun it stuff. It is a good opportunity, but thank uh, you. What we're going to do? Oh my God. It's a great opportunity. I'm sure the mayor knows that he's getting a great person. Yeah, yep. no doubt. I hope so. <laughs> So we did the vote, Tiff, already. So really, we have the uh, the first read of the diversity, equity, and inclusion statement and examples. And I think that we've got a few of them. I have several. You have several, yeah. right? So um, if you recall, Deerfield Inclusion Group, sent, yep. you were actually came in and presented a request. They followed up and sent me an email. And then there was a conversation at the personnel board meeting. Um, so what I did was I went back and I looked to see what some of the other towns were doing, just to give you an idea. Sure that different towns have been handling this differently. And the personnel board would like to speak with you as well as uh, DIG, Deerfield Inclusion Group, okay. on September 7th. But DIG also sent you a draft of a statement that you could make. So it's not just diversity, equity, and inclusion. It also is related to anti-racism. So mm -hmm. that's a bigger conversation you can have with the two groups. I will say that um, the personnel board charge isn't necessarily to set policy, but in this case, they have been very interested in policy that the board has considered. <clears throat> so it would be, I think, helpful to get some of their input because they do, they do understand that policy, setting these types of policies is going to be forward thinking in terms of how the, how the town grows and, and changes. 
Yeah, and I, I'm pleased to see that Frontier has, you know, um, language about anti-racism and, and uh, a lot of the issues that um, we would probably want to see in either a, a DEI um, policy or um, a combined state. policy that has, you know, references this this policy and, and the statement that we would issue. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we could, we could. You can chew on this more. Yeah. It's just, yep. I wanted you to have an idea. For instance, Hadley has a town committee. Um, some communities are utilizing access through community compact grants to study diversity, equity, and inclusion, both from a community perspective and or a municipal perspective um, okay. in the workplace. So I just wanted you guys yep. to have an no, idea of what your how, what other towns are doing mm -hmm. so great. that you have a better basis for your conversation. Um, because as, as Tim says, there's different ways to approach this. Um, yeah. You could do a much more in-depth statement. Um, I did ask Darius because I knew he had a statement. Yeah. And I thought he sent me the two of them that you see. Yep. But it's really, this is a good way for you to flesh out how you want to approach this particular issue. And there's nothing to say that it happens right away. It's simply, um, there's a larger conversation here, but there's also a question of really how the board wants to proceed long-term as well, because there could be an operational impact. Mm -hmm. A statement is a part of an approach. Um, how right. the board handles this internally, like the leadership handling this internally from a workplace perspective, but also a community perspective are things that you'll want to think about addressing. And certainly I think that'll be part of the conversation on the 7th. Okay. So we'll look at that and move on. Uh, the other, uh, it's not on the agenda. It was this, um, the, uh, the other oh, abatement. Oh yeah, that we were we, I meant on. to put that as an item unanticipated and you then I, just... it got lost in my list of things to do. So we'll have to vote it next week. So meeting. you did receive an application for a sewer yep, abatement. We did. Um, and <laughs> the paperwork came in. One thing, I think, Trevor, you wanted to take a look at it so that you could I see, did. sort of evaluate the application. Right, because the last, I, I, I finally, yeah, so I've got the, the application now. I know they paid their bill already, and this was another toilet issue kind of running while they were away. They went away for like six months or something and came back and realized the toilet had been running. Um, but it, it's, in a, it's in a building where we don't have a lot of history. Like the last time we had eight years or something of history this we only have you know a couple of years of history yeah, but it's right, obvious right, they yeah. obviously had a problem there so um i think we could probably come up with a decent uh formula so i'll do that and i'll maybe present it next okay, meeting so seventh. that we have a yep. have it on the agenda and then we can vote it yep okay great um i just want to make comment this is the person that i spoke about victor clay who is a new oh, oh yeah who's the new police chief um, at Harvard, Harvard, at Harvard. Mm -hmm. and so I'll, I'll photocopy this little okay. article because yeah. be I, I I think he 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 is I mean I I don't know it's just a real short thing but it just struck me that he was he would be one person that we could work with maybe great and maybe we can get him to come out and do a little something for free it okay. would be really proactive because it. I mean, his definition of community policing and, and, and um, diversity and inclusion and all that just struck a chord for me. So good. Um, I'll to photocopy are you this. Gonna, are you going to contact him or are you? No, or you I'm going to have John this contact him. Okay. And, um, then we can just read the article. Yeah, I was okay. just going to, I did it because, you know, I spoke, I, I said his name was Clay. It was Victor Clay. Got and um, I couldn't yeah. remember his first name. But I, I, he just, it struck me as very practical. Mm -hmm. And he, he has such a good diverse background that it, f it felt like somebody that I already connected with. Okay. And so given the fact that you and I really, really, really like the League of Cities person, whoever that was, I can't mm -hmm. remember his name either, but that was a $25,000 investment. And yes, it's, it's you know, there's a lot more work that they do and they are here for like a week and they do all kinds of meetings and all that kind of stuff. But 
I almost feel like this is potentially a more practical thing for us to actually do mm -hmm. okay. and have discussions and that we could have a long-term relationship with him. I mean, he probably is going to be at Harvard for a couple of years at least. So <laughs> if we make a connection with him early on, you know, maybe he, you know, work with us for over a period of time. And that would be so much more productive than, and low key and effective than to have someone blow into town, have us spend, because the, the 25,000 was a couple of years. Well, that was yeah. pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. So mm -hmm. it's probably a lot more now. And, and, and who do we really get as much out of it because it was such a condensed thing versus more of a long-term relationship that would really shift people's attitudes? Because I, I feel like it's an attitude thing versus, and, and just how you do things in general rather than, you know, just this is what you're going to come to a couple meetings, come to fill out some surveys, do mm -hmm. some, you know, action changes, and then everybody's fixed. You know, I don't, you, don't you know, this like doesn't that. happen. No. <clears throat> so I, I feel like this potentially is pretty good. So I'll, I'll photocopy okay. this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have a question for Casey, please. unless you were. No, go ahead. Um, can you give us a quick update on all the re records requests related to the park project? I mean, We've how had, are we doing on them? We just received a new one. And that's actually something I need to talk to council about because it particularly in light of the resignation we just talked about. Um, I, I, there's some research that's gonna be involved. But, so, but we also have other things in play related to that, to the property. So we've had, in the time I've been here, we've probably had six or seven requests. Um, we've complied to the best of our ability We've, I mean, certainly if we don't have a document, we don't have to produce a document. In other words, you don't have to create a document, right. but we have to parse through this newest records request. Um, and it, it's substantial. So oh, yeah, I'm sure it's a, it's a- we, we just received it yesterday. Okay. So I have 10 days to respond to it. And in this case, I'll, I'll need to be talking to Carlene about that as well. Okay. Um, Jen, did you have a comment? Yeah, I do. I have a comment because of um, the way our records are kept in like the big container outside. I just want to preface and sort of on my way out the importance of um, having all of those materials scanned and saved in a way that is easily accessible just for instances like this, yeah. that, um, you know, we have to, I, uh, for another rec records request, I took I don't even know. Remember how many boxes I oh, took? Was a lot. 50, oh, yeah, it, it was oh, more than that. I think yeah. there was like 25 or more boxes. And, um, you know, there's, it just needs to be uh, scanned and archived in a good way. And I really think it would be important for the town to, to, to do that um, just because of cases like this. Yeah. Um, we want to be upfront and, and say, this is what we have, or this is what we don't have, or this is what we can't find. And we want to be transparent as, as possible. And that's what we did. I said, okay, let's go through this and got them all out and look through tons of them. Alex helped me a little bit. I got the, the highway department to come over and bring those boxes from the container into the, into the meeting room. And I just think that it would be really important um, moving forward that the town um, thinks about that uh, archiving and um, purpose for just something like this. So um, just give me an idea. We got, we've got six or seven records requests ready. Plus, the, the, park, new one we plus the new one. And how many of them do we feel like we've substantially met? And um, do we have a plan on when we're going to meet them? Because delay is not an option. I mean, There's only to... one way you can delay with a public records request right. is you can say to them, look, if this is a substantial requests that we don't think we can meet within 10 days, right. we can say yeah. that we're going to extend it 25 days. So are you able to tell me tonight how many you've met and how many you have to still to work on? The I've met why... the ones that I've received, okay. except for this newest I one, right? Okay. I have 10 days to sort of oh, get yeah, a better yeah, no, that, idea. That's fine. Um, I just, I just want, there's a sense of urgency about meeting these things so we can move forward in, in court. 
Yeah, we do a good job about doing that. I mean, there is a, a hustle of putting other things in a back burner and and yeah, really going for forward. Sure. Um, and you know, Casey does a great job in in getting to the other department heads and asking for any information that they have and compiling a good file. We do it digitally. If we ask them if they want it in paper, we make arrangements for for payment. Um, depending, you know, depending on. Um, Carlene has now Thanks, stepped Robbie. in. And pardon me, mostly it's around research. So whatever we request for research, it's, it's not really, we try to provide things electronically as mm -hmm. best we can. Right. One thing that is really important is if we can start turning a lot of these records into electronic records yeah. and we can well, we publish can. them on through, through a website vehicle, right. we can refer people to the website. Right. We don't right. actually we, have to do all. We talked about King yep. services to come. And in. so Jennifer's yeah. already taken care of that. Right. Yep. yep. Um, right. And you only got days are ticking. Yeah. So. They're there coming. They're coming in. <laughs> yeah. There was another issue about um, the DEP's request um, to the conservation commission. And I was they were making some rather broad requests and I wondered if the legal counsel had weighed in on whether we needed to, to provide some of these things. So we are oh. providing them, okay. um, but that's really, it's a, it's a function that's a little bit more expansive than just me handling it or Carlene handling it yeah, because exactly. it's related to litigation. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think the EP was asking for things about the delineation and my understanding was that the delineation is set for three years and so, um, you know, there could be a legal component about whether this was germane in a, in a search, but um, I'm sure you're handling I, it well. I, I, well, the part of that is working with the consultants that are <coughs> assisting the town with the project. Excellent. Okay. And, and they're, they're helping us with that. So it sounds like it's moving forward as fast as it can. We're doing the best and, we can. And as more requests come in, you'll handle them. Well, well, and that's one of the reasons if we share the work mm -hmm. in a different way, um, we can hopefully respond more effectively. Um, but frankly, this isn't, we're not the only town that suffers from yeah. issues like this. I do think Jennifer's right. Um, we've talked about the archiving and database. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a it's, big I think expense, it needs but it to, needs it, to happen. It's, yeah. it's an expense, but it does need to happen because frankly, that's our best method to right. control the time costs right. it's a time in suck. personnel and, and the operational impacts. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not only that, I mean, I'll just preface that not, not only is it for these record requests, but it's also um, archiving and recording all of our special permits with both the planning right. and zoning board. Every so, time we need to, you know, go back and look at something and we want to make sure that we have a consistent um, view on things and make right. sure that you know, we know that we're not amending a special permit instead of do you know, an applicant can come in and they'll be like, oh, this is a new special permit. And and in fact, we're actually needing to amend a special permit. And it's it's a matter of um finding yeah. it. And so just <laughs> along those lines, was that discussion with PVMA having our public records? Um I didn't I didn't forward all the email, but this is um Peter Thomas was concerned that uh, our the oral history, the oral histories and stuff like that, that and and the records that PVMA actually does have of ours, um, the public records thing. You know, how, how do the town is supposed to be in control of those records? Yeah, I went back and, and I, I because Peter sent me an email about it, and I went, well, wait a minute, what does it actually say? You're right. So you know, whether we hold them electronically or hold them physically, we certainly have to know where they are because the public, we are responsible for mm -hmm. responding to the request. Right. And if we can't even get to them, that's a problem. Yeah. That's the reason that, that the public records law is framed the way it is. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're going to have, I mean, we need to have some, I mean, there has to be some discussion with PVMA because PVMA is doing us a favor. Well, but that's also an agreement that needs to be a contractually enforceable agreement because, right. and that's and something and that 350 can't do the I'm, select yeah. board and I need to work on that. I know. Right. I'm not disagreeing, but I think if we're moving forward with this, we, we need to put this on the radar because there, there could be issues for the next coming year with, you know, because they have, they have our records already. All right. So, but I don't even know what they have. This is on our agenda. 
So and it's eight thirty. It's been like yeah. I've I know. Put I know. my hammer down. Where's my gavel? I'm not. Like two fine. and a half hours. I'm no, just, it's not. I'm not. I'm just saying. Like we should probably put it on agenda. Here, look at those. I did see that. Oh, I saw you those. Did. Yep. Okay. Um. The one thing that isn't on our agenda, but I do just want to talk about is, and maybe get, I saw the, the um, town administrator, the assistant town administrator's job um, description is in here with it's some in highlight. There and it's not on the agenda because exactly. of course I didn't get this until uh, understood. today. Understood. So this is actually in, I'm containing this within my report. Perfect. So okay. what you're roll. seeing is a revised assistant town administrator job description. Mm -hmm. The revisions include removal of land use elements except for permit supervision, um, because we need more central support for operations. Yep. That includes communication and HR. Those elements are really important right now. Yep. Especially communication, because we really, that goes almost directly to meeting planning, moderation of meetings, um, and those activities that Jennifer spends a huge amount of time on. And Jennifer and I have had conversations publicly. I'm going to miss her immensely. She does so much work in that office that I can't even tell you. Yep. Um, I've made that clear to her personally, but she's an amazing employee. And mm -hmm. um, her new opportunity is going to give her so much growth and so much accessibility, but it leaves us with a real hole in the office. So Come in back order in for five us years. to deal with the operational impacts, we need to be able to make some changes in that job description. So I need a draft job description yep. to put up. I need the board to endorse starting the hiring process immediately. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I also need, and Jennifer, Jennifer did this like work and I appreciate that she did. Um, I need the board to approve deploying um, our part-time staff person, Alex Hirschenretter, as administrative support in the select board office at a rate of 22.48 an hour until a new ATA is hired and trained. Because is he he's available? familiar with doing some is he of that available? work. He is available. Okay. He is. I, I actually checked with him because I was gonna give more time if he wasn't available because that's important to me. Yeah, appreciate um, that. Thank you. And and Alex said that he was um, available to okay. be there. That's good. But I need to warn everybody that depending on what it takes to hire, we may need to consider requesting more money mm -hmm. um, for our for our um, payroll line later on. It yep. really depends. Well, um, we've got a meeting coming up. So. We we have a yeah we have a special town meeting. I haven't added that as a placeholder. I wanted to notify you first. Mm -hmm. But really, these are the elements we need to have in place so that we can hire. Yep, um, total full support. Because what Staff I'll do is I will notify one. the personnel board and put this draft job description up. I have a, there's a couple changes, but if we don't have something to hire from, we can't even start right. the process. No, we're good. So you're suggesting that this minus the deletions is what you'd like to use as the thing to post? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm good with that. Do you need a vote? Um, it would be no, it's not on our agenda, but uh, it's not on I'm the gonna... agenda, but this is truly an item unanticipated. I, make that I mean, this is the reason no, we have second. Second. <laughs> all those in favor. Tim Hilgey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate that. Appreciate so Jennifer's already got the vacancy notice ready. Um, if we have, now that we have this, I'll clean it up and we'll throw that up and we'll start the hiring. Process. Okay. Sounds good. And we good. very much appreciate your support to do that. For sure. Thank For sure. You. Whatever else you need in the meantime, just Thank reach you. Out, let us know. Okay. And you know how I feel, Jim. Okay. Thank you so much for all your Sad. hard work, especially through COVID. It was really tough. First day? Yeah. <laughs> first day. <laughs> third. What third. Did I get hired for? We closed the third, but the first day we were already dealing with it. It's mm -hmm. true. We 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 were thrown a curveball for sure. It was mm -hmm. very exciting. I was actually, you know, I have to say, I'm really impressed with in in retrospect looking back all of the boards and committees who learned how to Zoom with me. <laughs> yeah. And I really appreciate them learning this. And, and, or or and... the ones that are partially trained. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get through that, Carolyn. You know, we make it clickable. <laughs> think, but it won't start. <laughs> I've taught, it's, it's I've taught everybody. Out. Clickable, clickable, clickable links. Clickable, right. Send me a clickable link. Oh okay. man! So and she's going to be very missed. Of course. Anything else you've got? Listen, thank you. No. 
Okay. I'm going to really miss you. Yep. This yeah. is probably going to be a couple more weeks. Of, do so we get to see you at our, our, our September meeting? I don't think so. Do you leave on the 9th or the 7th? 7th. Oh, my goodness. Last day. Yeah. Well, so she's got a super, she's got to be on the link here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that why you're smiling so much? <laughs> yes, exactly. My last <laughs> meeting, I'm going to host. I, I always smile. <laughs> yeah, so. I know you do. You've been wonderful. <laughs> okay. So uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Uh, second. All those Sorry. in favor? Tim Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I was already Thank checked you. out. I'm going to photocopy this for you okay. guys. Okay. Thank all right. you all. Thank, Thank you, Jen. We'll see you Good night. Good night. Good night.